Bad movie idea. The movie starts with a shot of a guy going to work with that same vibe as like Patrick Bateman from American Psycho with that cold inner monologue. But instead of going up in the elevator, he decides to go down. And when he exits the elevator, he arrives in a secret government facility where it's revealed that this man is actually an alien living among us. So the film then follows this alien who is indistinguishable from the average man, but thinks very differently from the average human, like very cold and devoid of any empathy. And each day he reports back to the same facility to be examined and studied. But when he leaves, he is then studying humans. And this is kind of the deal that him and like the scientists at this facility have agreed upon. And it becomes this sort of information-based arms race between the alien and the scientists as they try to understand each other and try to find any ways to combat each other without revealing their true intentions. And then at the very end, the audience gets to decide how the movie actually ends, with them either favoring the alien or the scientists and humanity. You know how every time you search something up on Amazon, you'll just get bombarded with ads for that same exact product for like the next few weeks? Well, I found a way to turn it into a little game. So I was thinking about funny Halloween ideas recently and I remembered this picture of Connor Eats Pants with a Shadow the Hedgehog chain. So I looked it up to see how much it would actually be. But ever since then, I have gotten nothing but ads for the same Shadow the Hedgehog chain. Everywhere I go, I see his face and I've unironically wanted to get it now. So here's the game. It's not as much of a game as it is a psychological warfare, but what you do is you make a joke to your friend about a certain product. Something like 20 bucks or left that's not really a big financial investment and like would be kind of funny to get. And then what you do when they aren't paying attention, you search on their phone or their computer for said product. So hopefully after you search it, they should start getting ads for said product. And the goal is to see if you can incept them into buying said product without actually telling them to. Bad game idea. So it's a cheesy action movie, but in game form. Like the plot would make absolutely no sense, but would be this ultra American American bro adventure with you and your team of like four soldier guys. Like you break into the cartel and single-handedly stop all drugs. Then you go to Japan, eliminate the entire Yakuza in like an anime fight sequence. Then aliens attack and you jump in like Evangelion mechs to fight them off. Then you go into space to destroy the aliens homeworld and claim it for America. And like the game would switch genres in each of these missions. It starts with, like an FPS, then it goes to a racing game, and then it goes the third person then it's like a souls like then like a metroidvania and then like when you go to space is the shoot em up and once you kill all the aliens it just turns into space civ bad game idea the game is just called game and the entire concept is that the game itself is completely ai generated the movement and the mechanics and all of like the actual framework of the game is made by a team but those mechanics are then taken by an algorithm to generate the optimal game experience for you so each person will get a different game and it's calculated based on other games that you played the Time that you spent in said game and some like input from like a survey or something at the beginning but your experience will be completely unique and each time you reboot the game it's a completely different game unless you save it how it is in which case it will like become a completely separate standalone game that you just have the rights to and can sell now and seeing how advanced ai has become in like the past like few months this is definitely going to be real in like 20 years the robots have won i repeat the robots have won and the human versus robot war hasn't even started yet this this is chat GPT-3 and it is the single scariest thing that I have ever seen. It's a chat bot that can pretty much give you any information that you could ever want. And if you don't like what it gives you, you can literally tell it to change certain things. Like if I needed to make a five paragraph essay about how monkeys are the best animal, I can literally ask it and it will. And it will include true facts about monkeys that I didn't even give it. And if I don't like the way that it turned out, I can just tell it to make it sound smarter and it will. I told it to write me an essay. Ed Sheeran song comparing love to being constipated, and it gave me this absolute gem. And this isn't even the best one yet. There's already ChatGPT4, which isn't available to the public yet, but is more advanced than the one that we have access to. And then there's Google's Lambda, which made an engineer quit his job because he thought it was sentient. So, I mean, yeah, this man doesn't exist. Just look at him. Something about him is almost off-putting. He seems to have this sort of sly smirk, but when you zoom in, the smirk just isn't there. But that's only the beginning. His facial hair seems unnatural. His right ear is much longer than his left and looks almost twisted at the bottom. His eyes look in ever so slightly different directions. And all these small anomalies are because he is an AI generated image created by a company called Icons 8. 100,000 of them were created as a resource for people to use.
use, and they're all available on a public Google Drive. They're all royalty free so long as you attribute the link generated.photos, and they exist so we can eliminate the need for stock photos. Now, the technology isn't perfect, but it's weird to know that this man doesn't exist. Bad event idea. I went to the world's largest pizza party hosted by Eric, and it was a mess. <laughs> The line was full of people cutting and trying to clout chase their way into a higher position, which almost got the event shut down. You can tell them to get off your property. Yeah, but they're here. Okay, but they're on your property. It's a mess. I made a longer video about this, but after waiting for three hours in the 20 degree New York sidewalk, my friends and I made our way inside and decided to prank Eric. My friend Cole really needed a bathroom, so instead of asking the staff, he asked Eric himself. <laughs> No bathroom, and they gave us Pizza Hut pizza. Two out of ten. Would you rather have clones, but they're all self-aware and perfect replicas of you? Like, neither of you truly know who the original is, so you're, like, both just you, but, like, two copies of yourself? And, like, knowledge doesn't transfer, so if, like, you want one of them to learn a skill, they just have to be specced into that skill or try to teach everyone else. And you can make as many of them as you'd like, but they can turn on you, they can leave, you're not in control. Or would you rather have clones of yourself, but those clones are a high mind. Your consciousness is transferred amongst all of them, so each individual clone is still you and controlled by you, but you're always doing like a hundred different things of once that you're consciously aware of. Bad movie idea. Among Us. Now we've had movies like The Thing and Life where the premise is basically the same premise as Among Us, but I'm talking like an official Among Us movie with as many big named actors as possible. And like all of them would be in like those big like inflatable Among Us outfits, but like more professional looking. So all of the crewmates refer to each other as like the color that they are. And it isn't until someone's killed that it's revealed like what actor they are. So we'd have like Ryan Reynolds and The Rock just in these huge like inflatable Among Us costumes and like they take it super seriously but like it looks so goofy but the whole movie is just one reenactment and like dramatization of an actual game of among us that the cast played beforehand and they just like over dramatized it to make it into a full movie burger king is the worst fast food chain in the entire world please regale me with a worse option because the only good thing on the menu is the hershey pie which you can buy at the grocery store the only reason i would see anyone would go here is because you're broke and want a 10 piece nugget for like a dollar and some change the fries smell amazing but the second you bite into them you are met with nothing but disappointment whoppers are unbelievably mid they're just a bad fast food burger and don't even get me started on the femboy impossible patty i think it's like 90 percent estrogen and yes this is footage of me eating burger king in a suit unrelated bad power idea it not existing as you can maybe tell by the uh atmosphere currently my power's not on so enjoy this minecraft parkour gameplay as i regale you with my tales of struggle so last night around midnight the power goes off just because it does sometimes a little too windy out whatever so i'm like all right i'm not worried it'll come back in the next few minutes nothing it did not Until after about an hour what it did the power comes back on for like 15 seconds and i look outside the power's still on for like the buildings around me but my building still doesn't have power now at this point it was like 2 a.m so i'm like all right i'm just gonna go to bed hopefully Hopefully when I wake up, it'll be back, right? I was I was a little bit off on that estimate. It's now 6 p.m. and I still don't have power. So I talk to my landlord and I'm like, hey, I still don't have power. They're like, yeah, the power company will come eventually. We don't know when. Have fun. So I'm now relegated to my cave of darkness until further notice. Luckily, I have some lights like fun orb. But for the most part, I'm living in shadows right now. I'll update you guys tomorrow with how the situation progresses. As you know, I had no power yesterday. And as I uncovered more about the situation, I realized that it was far goofier than I had initially anticipated. So I live in an apartment complex where there's a bunch of different buildings and the power was not only restored in every other building except mine. It was also restored in half of my own building, but the other half and not my part. It's as if I was almost specifically chosen to not have power. So after I filmed that video yesterday, I had to pull up to a Panera Bread with my full setup just so I could edit the video. And I was lucky that I had a big portable charger to keep my phone alive during the whole thing. But after I returned from that Panera Bread around 10 p.m., the trucks from the power company finally decided to show up, bringing balance to the world. I just made the greatest financial decision that I've made in my entire life. Oh, look what we got here, baby. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell what it is by now, but be ready. Boom, 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 boom. 
Boom. Oh, it's not a phase, Mom. It's my life. Among us. R slash place is under attack by a secret threat. A threat that's lurking in plain sight. Some could say that this threat is lurking among us. Out in the open, trolls have begun to attack the intricate art pieces of Reddit's biggest project yet. This post exposing the attack has been blowing up across multiple subreddits because within the Star Wars picture, there exists a collection of sussy imposters. But Star Wars isn't the only one affected. League of Legends has been improved, Terraria has been overtaken, and Super Mega has been enhanced. Nobody is safe. Floppa's sipping on that Diet Doctor sus, Aaron Yeager has the Among Us tattoo, and even the Among Us itself has been amogified. Bad show idea! It's an animated series, like an anime or cartoon or something, but it follows the lives of four main characters, and each episode is made by a completely different studio in a different art style. Each episode follows a different point in these characters' lives. In the first episode, characters are born, they go through like the early stages of childhood, the art style here would be more round and like colored with pastels. Then once they're like 10, it starts looking like One Piece or something and in their 20s like they move to the big city and it's animated by studio trigger to show off all the colors of city life and in each episode you're getting one singular day like five to ten years after the last episode and the changing of the art style will reflect the changing of the characters and reflect the overall emotions that the characters are feeling bad game idea it's an open world anime fight scene simulator but this isn't like a naruto fight i'm talking goku versus saitama i'm talking the fight from the season one for finale of Invincible. I'm talking you have an entire planet that you're fighting on with cities, forests, suburbs, mountains, rivers, you name it, you can fight in it and the entire environment is destructible. And within these different areas, there's different environmental hazards that you can run into and use to your advantage in the fight. Like in the forest, you can pick up a tree and just start using it as a club. And you can choose to play as either a hero or a villain, where the villain's goal is just to destroy as much stuff as possible and level cities, while the hero's goal is to stop the villain from doing that with as minimal damage as possible. Bad business idea. Anti-Chick-fil-A. Do you know how Chick-fil-A is closed every Sunday? Well, anti-Chick-fil-A, or as I shall call it, Berg Phil O, will be open exclusively on Sunday. And the reason I call it Berg Phil O, because instead of having only chicken, it has only beef. And it's every menu item from Chick-fil-A, but like the beef variant of that. So like, we'll have some weird like beef chicken nuggets and like burgers with just pickles instead of chicken sandwiches, the whole menu. And as far as the restaurant itself goes, the interior will look exactly like a Chick-fil-A, except everything is black instead of white. And there's like, a, I don't know, pride flags everywhere. <laughs> and the goal is just to put one as close to a Chick-fil-A as possible. So when people like go out on a Sunday and they're like, oh, let's go to Chick-fil-A and then realize that it's closed. They'll just see this like ominous mirror dimension Chick-fil-A like beckoning to them in the same parking lot. <laughs> Combo idea, attack on Titan and Elden Ring. So the game would be a Souls-like from the perspective of a scout from like the first few seasons of Attack on Titan and the plot follows your character who is left for dead beyond the walls as they have to fend off Titans left and right trying to make it back to the protection of that walled city. But once you make it there you discover that the first wall has been compromised like in the show and you have to go through yet again killing as many Titans as possible on your way to safety. And of course the combat will be very unforgiving because souls like but the finale of the game would have you like in the rumbling basically powerless to stop it. Bad movie idea. So it isn't as much of a movie as it is an ARG, but imagine you have a director who's really famous, like every movie they make is a masterpiece, but in every one of their movies, they have a five to 10 minute post credit scene that is completely unrelated to the actual movie and is instead another movie entirely. So over time, people start to go and they see this director's movies specifically for the post credit scene so they can see like the secret movie that this guy's making. And if one of the movies is rated poorly, like people will still go to see it, but like an hour late just to catch the post credit scene. So with each release, people are theorizing about the actual order of the scenes and like what it all means until the director releases the full cut. But it isn't the same movie. It is a shot for shot recreation of the movie with differences from the original scenes that reveal the actual plot. Would you rather have to every day fight a feral dog you don't know when it just attacks at random or every week have to fight three thugs trying to mug you? 3v1 random day of the week. You can never die from either of the attacks, but you will take on damage. Like you'll be wounded. You'll have your stuff stolen from you. Like the guys will never have guns, but they might have a knife or like blunt weapons. And the dog is a completely different breed each time. Firstly, I think I'd take the guys because I'd feel really bad about the dog and the dog would come out of nowhere. So like I'd just be chilling and then like a chihuahua's bouncing at me. So yeah, I'm 
taking the guys. Bad anime idea. So it starts off, we're introduced to this whole cast of characters. They're like in high school or something. And for the first two episodes, it's literally just slice of life. But at the end of each episode, the main guy has these premonitions of like the world just exploding from like a laser beam or something. And it's never addressed until episode three when the main character is finally like, hey, I've had these like weird dreams where the earth explodes. And then it happens. The entire earth just explodes. It's super detailed. Cities collapse into rubble and the entire planet just breaks apart. Then cut to some several hundred or thousand years in the future. This would be foreshadowed in episode one, but we'd sent people to Mars and they were able to rebuild society almost exactly how it was on Earth, just on Mars now. And then we're reintroduced to the same cast of people, but like just a little bit different and they're on Mars now. So they're like reincarnations of our main cast and the reincarnation of the main character from before is now having dreams of what happened to Earth. So now he's trying to figure out what happened on Earth before it happens to Mars. Would you rather every single piece of food you eat is extremely flavorless, like everything tastes like 1% of what it's supposed to taste like, or every single piece of food you eat is hyper flavored? Like your drink of choice would just taste like pure concentrate, except like a thousand times more potent. Like I'm drinking my gamer subs, it tastes like I'm just shoveling the powder in my mouth. It's like the idea that giving a Dorito to a 15th century peasant would kill them on the spot. You eat one mild hot chip and you pass out instantly. Bad anime idea. So it's a cyberpunk sort of sci-fi action show, but the first episode is actually the second to last. There's all these characters that you don't know. Some of them die. There's these like really cool like action set pieces. The best animation you've ever seen. Best like fight choreography you've ever seen. But then halfway through the episode, it cuts back to the beginning of the story where you get your exposition and whatnot. But there isn't any action. And the next few episodes are the same thing. More world building, more character development, but very little action. And as an audience member, you start to question whether the first episode was actually like real as part of the show or if it was just like a dream of some sort. But then suddenly around episode like seven or eight, everything just goes crazy. And the stakes are exponentially increased until the moment at the beginning of the show. But this time, things play out differently. The characters that died at the beginning are different than the characters that die now. And once it gets to the same spot in that episode where it cut back to the beginning, it does it again. And the reason for this is the big twist of the series, which is revealed at the very end. And what is that twist, you ask? Can we get much higher? Would you rather have your life be a musical so every interaction you have with someone is done in song and dance form, but only the people involved in it can actually hear it and nobody acknowledges that it happened after the fact like there's choreographed dances and everything while you're just like going to get cheese at walmart and it's a different song and dance every time but after it ends life just returns to normal or would you rather have your life be a student film so there's like constant continuity errors like if you leave a mug behind you expect it to be in a different position when you turn around and also the writing would be really bad and i'll try to teach you some sort of really basic lesson bad anime idea Everyone loves a villain that's redeemable. Like, even if their actions weren't the greatest, they still had a point or whatever. So, this anime is your standard fantasy, magic, battle type action. But the power of the hero comes from his moral standing over his enemy. So, the worse the enemy, the greater the power. But the hero thinks that it's based on how much karma he has over them. Like, how many good deeds he did versus how many bad deeds they did. When in reality, it's literally just, like, their morals. So, it starts off, he's just wrecking dudes left and right. You got your comically evil, like, mustache twirling villains just getting absolutely obliterated by this guy. But as the series progresses, the enemy starts to have better and better motives and he starts to become cockier and cockier until he reaches the guy who sees the hero as a villain and has a better moral high ground to kill him from and the hero is just like powerless against him like, like it would be like a thanos type situation where like he thinks this is the best way to like save the universe is by just killing a bunch of people and then like the main character dies and that's the end of the show bad book idea so it's a series of short stories like an anthology of some sort but all the stories connect in some very oddly subtle way like one character is described in the the background of another story or like the main plot of one story is referenced in the next but they're all completely disconnected other than a couple throwaway mentions and this goes on for like 12 different chapters each being a unique story but then at the very end chapter 13 all of the characters are brought together avenger style it's revealed that some of them are enemies some of them are related in some way and they all come together at the very end for this huge climactic showdown bad business idea so it's a budget airline company where every single flight is cheaper than like every other airline and they'll go for super long distances but the catch is they fly one plane like from one side of the world to the other whenever they fly over your stop you just have to jump out like you have to skydive you, you start at new york you're going to florida and like you want to go to like south carolina you literally have to just jump out halfway through and like the flight attendants won't really care because they're not 
not being paid much. So when it's your time to go, they just like push you out and say aim for a field or something. And you could probably call it Spirit Airlines or something like that. Ah, that joke's too overused. Tell me what you think it should be in the comments. Bad car idea. The one seater. Gas is expensive, cars are expensive, even like a Nissan Altima is like 25 grand. So I propose the new affordable car for low income drivers, the one seater. Basically a motorcycle, but with four wheels and inside. Oh, uh, but Johnny, that's a four wheeler. Nah, it's got a roof. You get in, all there is, one seat, the wheel, the pedals. That's all you need. There's only one door. Like all the center console stuff is on the other side because there's just no door mechanism. The goal of this thing would be to make it as light and as cheap as possible with as little in it as possible just so it's affordable no trunk just a little space behind the seat no passenger seat just a motorcycle but substantially less cool would you rather have theme music like every time you walk into a room a sting plays like when they show the family guy house and it plays the little song it's that and there's always like music accompanying everything that you do like if you're given a motivational speech it's going crazy in the background it's crescendoing you're you're giving the speech of a lifetime but if you're depressed there's just like a sad piano playing at all times and everyone can hear it. It's not just you. Or would you rather have a live studio reaction to everything you do? Say a banger joke, laugh track. See someone you don't like enter the room. Ooh. Everyone can also hear this as well. Bad character idea. It's an omnipotent being that could do literally everything except swim. Homie probably ate one of the most OP devil fruits from One Piece imaginable. So even though he's basically God, he is just terrified of water because it's like his only weakness. Like, he wouldn't even shower out of fear of drowning. And he is constantly put into situations where he needs to prove his power. And they always require water in one way or another. Like, some random guy will be like, oh, you're, you're God? Welcome water then. And he'll do it just sweating bullets the entire time. Bad Christmas present idea? Take one gift and wrap it to look like a completely different item. For example, I got my brother a gift for Christmas, but I won't say what it is because he watches some of my videos. And I wrapped it in such a way that it looks like a guitar. It is not a guitar. It's one of those things where like, if you make it so obvious that it's something else and it's not that thing that's very obvious, it's the perfect throw off. My philosophy is part of the gift is the experience of opening it, the mystery, the intrigue. It all adds to the, the wonder of Christmas. So why not make that experience a little bit more uh, flavorful? Bad city idea. The cube. Now I'm no architect or engineer, but when you think about it, a lot of our problems in cities are about transportation and space and the pollution and effects of late stage capitalism. But what if we design designed an entire city indoors in just a really big cube. All the transportation inside would have to be electric, obviously, to avoid the fumes and people just dying from carbon monoxide poisoning. But imagine a fully indoor and layered city. And each floor could be designed to house a specific purpose. So the bottom floors are residential, the middle floors are commercial, and the top floors are corporate. So if you're at work and you want to go to lunch, all you have to do is take the elevator down to the commercial floor. It would take up the same amount of space, like, laterally on the ground as a normal city, but will be much less congested because it's all 3D. And it'll be run by lizards. Bad COD campaign idea. So it'll start out before the war ever starts with a cutscene of your player character. He's in high school, he joins the army, he starts a family, war starts, and he's forced to the front lines. And you will play as this character, going through, taking out enemies, but then like a good COD twist, he will be killed. Like in a cutscene, like he'll just get shot. And then the perspective of the game switches to the guy that killed him. Now you're playing as whatever like the enemy faction in the COD game is. And the characters are very similar. Young guy with a family, talks about his family like during the missions, and again, he gets killed. It switches back to like the original side's perspective. And this continues where you're introduced to these new characters with motivations for why they're there. And by playing through these battles, you start to realize that the people fighting in this war are all the same. Fighting somebody else's battle to like provide for their family or just get by in life. And then the whole game ends with a nuke being dropped. I feel like that would have more impact than no Russian did. Would you rather be trapped in a time loop? But it wouldn't be like Groundhog's Day. You can't leave. You can't progress. Like every time it restarts, you'll completely forget everything. So you'll like start to figure it out. And by the end of the loop, you'll realize the reality of your situation. But before you can do anything to change that, the loop will just completely restart again. Or would you rather be trapped in a time loop? Bad creature idea. If life got an update and added a new animal, a new being, this is what I think it probably would be. So it's a, a little Grimblow, a little small little 
little guy that scurries around has seven legs to be special. And this thing only eats like apples or something like oddly specific. So it's a small seven legged furry little rodent that like climbs trees to steal apples. And as a defense mechanism, first it will throw those apples back at you if it happens to have one. But if that doesn't work, it'll use its shout ability, which creates an ultrasonic sound wave that can shatter your eardrums. And they will be exclusively sold at PetSmart. Bad game idea. It's an FPS platformer, but your ammo is actually your health. Gameplay would be something like Doom Eternal, where you have different weapons with different abilities, like the shotgun has a grappling hook, stuff like that. But since the ammo is your health, there are no ammo types. So you can use whatever weapon you want with the caveat that different guns require different amounts of health. Like the pistol will take one HP, but be weaker than the rifle, which takes five. So you constantly have to be watching your health to make sure that the next shot doesn't kill you. And then the enemies will be decently difficult, so you have to dodge their attacks to finish the level, or just have god tier aim. Bad drink idea. Whenever you're at the airport, there's that one drain that you have to pour all your beverages into. I imagine it tastes like a weird blend of watered down coffee, coke, and like apple juice or like some weird fruit flavor. So for this drink, we recycle and repurpose the airport jungle juice and repackage it as a mystery beverage. It'll be sort of like the one chip challenge, but instead of it being hot chip, it's just sad. This will be the new TikTok trend of 2023. Bad game idea. So it's an RTS, but it's also a 3D platformer. You'd have a main player character and a group of units that you need to command. And the game will be split screen with one side of the screen showing the player character in a detailed view of the map and the other side showing a zoomed out top down view of everything. So in each level you have to navigate your character around the map as like recon and there could be some like rudimentary like FPS elements here to like help your units out or whatever. And then using that intel that you get from the platformer sections, you have to move your units in the RTS side. Bad game idea. So it's an RPG with like thousands of hours of storytelling and world building. There's a huge super in-depth party where everybody is super interesting. There's not a single annoying character at all, but halfway through the game, your main player character dies and the game just continues without you. Like you're basically watching a movie for the next hour. And then your party eventually goes to like revive your character, but then he reincarnates into another world. And in this other world, it's an FPS now. And if you die in the FPS, you get sent to a platform. You die in the platformer, you get sent to Tetris. You literally just keep repeating different genres that aren't the game that you came from until you can fully complete like an hour long game without dying. And once you won 100% one of those games, then you can finally go back and you're like, you're revived into the world and like everything's good. But nobody ever like mentions what just happened. Like nobody mentions the genre shift. It's never brought up again. And there's like another hundred plus hours of content. But this is definitely somehow already a niche indie game with like thousands of loyal fans. Would you rather have the ability to fly or the ability to breathe underwater and like swim really fast. The flight would be like the cool Superman or Omni-Man flight where you just kind of levitate with minimal effort and just go at a couple hundred miles per hour. And with the breathing underwater, you could swim at similar speeds, same like minimal effort. You could also open your eyes and like have good water vision. You can also nullify the effects of ocean pressure the deeper you go. And like you can still breathe on land like normal. I think I'm taking flight here, but being able to be like the only person to explore the oceans would be pretty sick. Bad game idea. So it's a puzzle platformer. Think of something like Portal where it's first person and you're going through different tests. But the game takes place in like a medieval fantasy setting and all of your movement options are class based. So each level will have multiple ways to complete it, but each way that you can complete it, each path will only be available to certain classes. So one class could be like a rogue and they get like a double jump and a dash. One class could be a mage and they get a portal and a magic missile they can use to rocket jump. And you have like five or six classes. So when you beat the game, you can replay it as the different classes. And it'll have like a lot of replayability because even though it's the same levels, there's different paths that you have to take to complete them. But once you beat the game with each class, you unlock a challenge mode that lets you use every single class's abilities for this super difficult final set of challenges. But if you mess up one single time on the final challenge, you have to completely restart. And once you beat it, you don't even get anything other than like a JPEG of a guy giving you a thumbs up. It's time to wake <sighs> up. It's what I would say if I was waking you in the morning. You've been gone for too long. You slept an extra hour and missed work. It's already too late. I called your work on your behalf, so it looks like you're gonna get the day off.
bad horror idea. What if you were trapped in a video? Like your entire life is just a looping one minute or less video. Would it be any different when it looped? Like, like could 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 you change anything? Like, is there is there like anything that you could do? Would people watching it like get a different version each time? Please, I need to know because I'm. I'm yeah. It's time to wake up. <laughs> Bad movie idea. So it's a horror movie where no one ever actually dies. You have your standard slasher cast of teenagers and they keep like hearing things in the distance and going to investigate. But like it turns out it's like, oh, it was just a raccoon at the trash can. Super suspenseful build up and no payoff ever. It'll cut to like an actual killer like going around. You'll think this character is gonna get got by the killer and then it just cuts back to the character that you thought was gonna die and they're fine. And at the end it's revealed that the killer actually was killing people during the night it was just a different cast of people and you'd cast like characters that kind of look like the main cast as like the cast that dies so the main cast hears about this and is like dang that could have been us, man. And then they just go along with their lives like nothing happened. Like they they all follow their dreams. They achieve everything they've ever wanted. And it ends with all of them dying after long, successful and happy lives. Bad game idea, Overwatch 2. That is all. Bad movie idea. It's a National Geographic or Animal Planet style nature documentary, but just on a completely fictional creature. This could be like an alien or like an animal on earth that just isn't natural, like some like psychic little goblin creature or like a cryptid, like Bigfoot, but it's framed like it's just completely real. There's a film crew just in the woods, like watching this thing. And it could even be like an analog horror type of thing. It could be like a companion piece to Star Wars, but I think it it would be really funny if we got like a full like feature length 90 minute documentary where the narrator is just BSing the entire thing with random facts on a made up animal. Here we see the squingus in its natural habitat. Watch as it uses its grumulon to fend off the bears. And then you just have the whole thing narrated by David Attenborough. Bad movie idea. So it's a mockumentary from the perspective of a killer in a horror movie, but they are just terrible at killing people. The only reason they've never been sent to jail for being a serial killer is that they literally haven't been able to kill anybody yet like there'll be scenes like they're blatantly trying to kill someone he's like talking on the phone in a public park he comes behind he's ready to stab the guy just goes whoop conveniently coincidentally like dodges every single attempt and like the killer just gives up and goes home and he like goes to like a support club with like other famous movie villains michael myers and jason are like trying to pat him on the back to console him he goes to like a killer training montage and in in the end he finds that like stereotypical group of teenagers and like goes on a rampage finally kills them and it ends with like a dance party for some reason this was the original concept behind a movie that me and my friends made in 24 hours but it kind of devolved into being a big morbius joke so you can check it out if you want bad movie idea the movie takes place in an ultra sci-fi future where humans are colonizing other planets but when they do they only send like 10 people to each planet because it's really uncertain whether or not people will actually be able to survive there so our main character and his wife sign up they go into cryostasis but when the guy wakes up everyone that he came with is dead wife dead and he's on this new planet that is insanely dangerous barely hospitable then he has to not only survive on this terrible planet by himself but lie to the rest of humanity that the planet's like great so he can get a rescue team bad superpower idea you have the ability to create stuff out of thin air but only once a day and you can't choose what it is and there are no limits to what it could be either like it could be anything from a blade of grass to a piece of technology that won't be invented for another thousand years like you could accidentally spawn a new planet or a black hole literally infinite possibilities ultra high risk ultra high reward but most of the time it'll be something mundane that won't really do much like a bagel or a stick or something bad town idea it's an entire town that's completely fake like it looks real and all the buildings are there you can go inside them but it's all part of an elaborate arg where all the citizens and workers there are in on the bit they are all paid actors so like the mcdonald's worker is still a mcdonald's worker but he's also a performer giving you little bits of lore about this town and if you go to this town you can interact with the inhabitants as if you were living in their reality and you can take this idea in any way that you want it could be a western town or like a sci-fi mars space or something like the possibilities here are endless it'll kind of be like a truman show scenario where all of the actors live in the town except anyone could go there and experience it bad youtube channel idea so you take a guy and for some reason he always wears aviators and a red 
flannel. And then what he'll do is he'll give out bad ideas that aren't actually that bad, just more impractical at best. But he'll always say that they're bad just to gaslight you. And he'll also do like long form content, but nobody will even know that it exists. And then for some reason, he'll have a quarter million subscribers. Yeah, that one sounds familiar for some reason. Jokes aside, thank you all so much for the support in the past few months. I wanted to make a video like this just to thank everyone for enjoying my weird and wacky ideas. And also to let you know that I have another channel where I make long form content. Short form content doesn't really let me tell you that that exists, but it does. So I suggest that you check it out. But if it's not your thing, I'll still be here making daily shorts for you guys to enjoy. Bad anime idea. So it's your typical shonen main character fights a bunch of guys type of show, except it's told from the perspective of the main villain who watches the main character as he defeats more and more of their minions on a quest to find his father or something. But as it turns out, the main villain is his father. And it's like this really complicated sort of father-son Star Wars relationship. So in the end, the protagonist finally makes it to the villain and the villain, as they narrate what their son is doing, comes to terms with their inevitable demise. Because in reality, they have been fighting for the sole purpose to train their son and make their son stronger for a world-ending threat that's about to attack in the final season. But it's like Attack on Titan where the final season is like eight seasons long. Bad game idea. Beat Saber, but as a Kinect game. The Kinect was a fun and wacky little piece of hardware that was just way too ahead of its time. But thanks to some drivers like Driver for VR, you can use it in VR games now. So I did, and it kind of worked. Now there's definitely an easier way to do this that I am completely unaware of, but I am no computer boy. I'm a little, I'm a little video guy. Little fun little video, little goober. So the biggest challenge wasn't even playing the song, which was another can of worms entirely. It was selecting the song on the menu. Oh, this is, this is so stupid. And I made a full video on my YouTube channel just trying this, but just watch. Okay, okay, okay. Let me play Sigma mode, please. But eventually after like a half an hour of just fiddling with this thing, I was finally able to select sicko mode and play it for a few seconds. <laughs> What is the greatest game of all time? There's a lot of debate and a lot of discussion about this, but we can never come up with a definitive answer. Cause realistically, what's the criteria? Based off sales, it's either Minecraft or Tetris, but neither of those games have a story. So is story irrelevant? But then people will say, oh, it's games like The Last of Us who have a really good story, but that good story forces the gameplay to be a lot more linear and somewhat repetitive. Then there's games like Breath of the Wild that have a story and are very open, allowing everyone to play the game the way that they want to, but the soundtrack is pretty bare bones. It's just a guy on a piano going like this occasionally. There's so many different ways to interpret this question, but let's be honest, guys. The best game of all time is Super Monkey Ball Adventure for the GameCube. Bad show idea. So you got a lawyer with a comically lawyer sounding name. We'll call him like Evan Legal or something like that. And he's like a really respectable guy loved by the community. Everyone loves this guy. But little does anybody know that all of his clients are guilty. Now, before you comment, this is just Better Call Saul. There's a twist. Evan is actually the leader of the mafia and he has dirt on every single one of the judges so every time he needs a fall guy for one of his organization's crimes they literally just pick someone at random and just go boom guilty even though they literally had nothing to do with the case at all so another lawyer picks up on what's actually going on and decides to fight an uphill battle against evan to prove his brother's innocence who is being framed for murder but the entire show is told from the perspective of evan so like the actual good guy is the antagonist of the series and the name illegal Bad game idea. So it's a VR game where you play as a tiny little baby man in a world where everything is huge. But the goal of the game is to get bigger. So you start off like Ant-Man size, but by progressing through different puzzles and platforming challenges and other like mini games, you begin to grow larger and larger and the perspective of the game switches to the point where you're like a normal size guy and then like you're huge and knocking down buildings and like the military tries to fight you. So you like pick up a tank and use it as a gun in like an FPS section until you get so big that you're bigger than the earth and you go through space now and then you get to the point where you're the size of the universe but then the twist is that the universe is just one like atom in a bigger universe and now you're in a bigger universe and you do the same thing again. Bad game idea. So it's a roguelike dungeon crawler but it's also a VR combat simulator. Think something like Blade and Sorcery mixed with Binding of Isaac. The combat would mainly be like hand-to-hand -hand medieval style combat but with spells and other abilities that you can use in a pinch. Now this could be just a normal FPS but I think VR 
VR would make it a lot cooler because the verticality that the third dimension offers will allow you to do so many cooler things in VR. Normally in a roguelike, you only have the two dimensions, but now you could have a room with like staircases and like zip lines where you could do all sorts of cool physics stuff, but still have like the randomly generated floor plan, which allows for like a really easy sense of progression. Cause like blade and sorcery is fun, but like you're just killing dudes for the heck of it. There's no sense of progression in it whatsoever. And since it's a roguelike, all the weapons and spells that you get will be pretty much RNG throughout each run. So it'll make those VR shooter moments where everything's tense and you have to reload that much more fun and also stressful. Bad game idea. So it's an analog horror game. Basically it's if world building was a horror game, but the game would have you in a cabin in the woods in like the late nineties, early two thousands. And as you explore the cabin, you find VHS tapes that cue you into what you should be scared of. And throughout the entire game, there's just this building sense of dread. As you learn of all of the horrible things that could kill you. And they can once you learn about them, but they won't ever show up if you don't. But the more you know, the more you start to have close encounters with them. But you never quite get a good look at them. Like it's always just barely missing. But as you continue, you find more and more secrets in the cabin, which leads to this underground lab where the climax of the game has all of these monsters escaping captivity and chasing you as you escape into the forest in like this crazy cinematic over the top thing. Or you could just like stay there for an hour and do nothing and then the game just ends peacefully. Analog horror is one of the coolest things that the internet has created. And since it's spooky month, I thought it'd be fun to talk about it for a little. Analog horror is a subgenre of found footage where the story is displayed almost in second person. Usually you have a world that's pretty similar to our own, except there's a few like cosmic horrors mixed in here and there. And one of my favorite examples of this is Monument Mythos, which all of these are on YouTube. You can just watch them for free, but it tells the story of an alternate history America in the form of like instructional tapes, documentaries, home videos, and media that exists in universe. It's all stuff that exists like as a like VHS in the world. And it's never like, like, oh, there's a camera like following the character. But the thing that makes analog horror work the best is just the slow build of dread that happens throughout each video. Like they'll usually end with like a spooky goblin going like, Rah! but the scariest thing isn't like the, the weird image. It's the idea that like this cosmic thing could exist and you are just powerless to stop it. Making cursed bread, part one. Bread is essentially nothing more than flour and water with yeast to make it rise and maybe salt and sugar for taste. So instead of using water, today we're using Gatorade. I saw a post that said you could do it, so we're trying it. What's all this bread? That's <laughs> <laughs> how the pros did it. Gordon Ramsay, yeast. Yeast. You are alive, but soon you will die. Salt. Here we go. And then I'm gonna keep mixing while you add it. Oh, it's red! Oh, oh, that's yucky. <laughs> <laughs> this is how the pros do it, dude. I'm gonna pop it down. Master Bakers, Johnny and Gabe. After letting it rise, we put it in the oven. And once it came out, we were ready to munch. It's definitely red. It's t let's test it. It tastes like bread. It tastes like bread. It's really good bread. It's good bread. Bread is so refreshing though. Packed with electrolytes. <laughs> I give it a bread out of 10. Bad game idea. Breaking bad, but as a strategy JRPG. Hear me out. You go through the entire story of Breaking Bad and level up Walter and Jesse, but like the combat is like Fire Emblem where you move on a grid. So you have like one half of the game where you're fighting rival meth dealers in this like Fire Emblem type combat. And the other half is like a rhythm game trying to make the best meth possible and like the better your mess like the more debuffs you get in the like combat section and for some reason all of the music will be done by imagine dragons oh, the misery. Bad business idea. You find a secret spot in the city. Like in a dark alleyway, there's an unmarked door that takes you to a hallway. And at the end of that hallway, there's two different doors. And one of them leads to a staircase that goes down to another hallway. But at the end of this one, there's a single door with one of those slidey bits for someone to open and ask for a password. The password, of course, being a hail to the king. And once you're let inside, it is a normal Burger King. Like the inside is indistinguishable from any other Burger King you've ever been to. The windows all have projectors that show 
like a normal Burger King parking lot, like a highway close by. But if you ask for the secret menu, a group of men in black suits will put a burlap sack over your head and chloroform you and then drop you off at a random Burger King location anywhere in the US. The business will be known as Burger King Fast Travel. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I love the costume. I love the, the dedication. I mean, I love the, the uniform as a pirate. Course, yeah, yeah. Can you do this for me? If you're okay with this, can you ask me out on a date? So I was wondering. I've seen you walking around the convention for a while and, um, well, you're just so charming. I was wondering if you maybe want to go to the maid cafe with me after a minute. It would be kind of sus if I did, but yes, yes, I will. <laughs> I mean, I'll turn a blind eye if you've entered. <laughs> Are you having a good day? I'm having a wonderful day, honestly. I'm a little bit tired, but you know, comes with the costume. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're not costume. They're definitely not costume. The, the real, the real life, normal occurrences. Do you have a jar of dirt by any chance? I do indeed. I have a jar of dirt. Esports are crazy. I've talked about it a little bit before, but I'm a pretty big fan of the Call of Duty League. And regardless of your opinions on COD, watching the pros play that game is some of the best sports entertainment that I have ever seen. I've never really been into sports, but watching the gamers, I'm all for it. I've gone to several in-person events for COD, and even though the audience is a bunch of sweaty gamers watching other even sweatier gamers play on a stage, the feeling there is electric. Every like multi-kill is celebrated like a touchdown. And as a gamer, it is one of the coolest experiences. Like I can't recommend it enough. Go watch esports, it's fun. Bad show idea. Business cowboy. One part business, one part cowboy. The show would take place in the early 1900s, like a similar time period to the first Red Dead Redemption game, and it follows the titular business cowboy who has all the experience of being a cowboy, knows how to live off the land, rides horses, lassos people, whatever. He does all the cowboy stuff, but he's also running like a trading company, and he's like an inventor doing all this different stuff. And each episode, he travels from town to town selling different items, almost like a door-to-door -door salesman, but played by Clint Eastwood. What happens when countries fight each other, but online? On r slash place, that question was answered. As it turns out, the trans community has more power than the British Empire. But with all these countries fighting for dominance amongst the anime and the imposters, there has been one country that has just been trying its best. Canada. Every country figured out their flag within minutes. Ukraine had the whole map to itself for a while. Canada. Throughout the entire time, Canada has been struggling to just make a single leaf. Iteration after iteration, Canada has yet to figure out how to make its own flag. Now, it's partially Canada's fault, partially the fact that all the surrounding flags have been getting attacked over and over again, and partially due to trolls who think it's funny that Canada still can't figure itself out. Making cursed bread, part two. In our last bread adventure, we substituted the water in our bread for Gatorade. And today, we're using Baja Blast. Half a cup of Baja Blast. Th that's fine. Dude, this is just foaming up. Uh, it's a carbonated liquid! Put a little more Bajo on here. I think honestly the consistency we had at the end with the Gatorade was probably ideal. I want it to look like Baja Blast. It's it not looks, gonna look like Baja It looks like bread. More! More! Like a little hole. Put some in the, in the little... After letting it rise, it was oven time. Followed by eating time. It smells a little bit high. I smell, I smell like a slight bit of like the, the like lime. tropical fruit. I yeah. smell the lime. Let's give this one a bite. I can taste it in that one. There's definitely like a fruity flavor in this. That's actually really good. That's really good. The Gatorade bread was pretty much just bread. This, this is enhanced bread. We also made like 14 more of these in the full video on my YouTube channel, including one made out of barbecue sauce. So you can check that out over there right now or stay tuned for part three. Bad band idea. It's a screamo death metal band, except all of the lyrics are oddly religious, like Slipknot, but all the lyrics are just about loving Jesus. <laughs> Satanic imagery is a motif of a lot of metal but i imagine they just like paint this like weird dark image and then the bridge of the song would be about jesus saving you but like it's it's still like screamo like death metal so the words would be extremely hard to understand and you'd hear it on the radio thinking this is a song about like graphic murder or something in fortnite but it's just talking about like the grace of the father i think that'd be really funny bad game idea so it's a christmas themed fps where you play as one of santa's elves on december 26th 
some secret Santa lore that is real and I'm not making up right now for this idea is that every year after Christmas Day, the elves have to fight each other to the death to remain employed. So with the team-based shooter with different abilities and Christmassy items, you get like a snowball launcher and like a candy cane throwing knife. And each day the game would run in-game tournaments where teams of three compete in a 64 team bracket with the winning team getting to in the lore of the game stay for next Christmas. And there'd be normal lobby multiplayer as well. But winning one of these tournaments gets you a number next to your name for your elf's years of service. And that would serve as like the game's ranked mode. Can I get an intense anime rock, paper, scissors fight between the two of you? Best two out of three. Best two out of three. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ooh. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. That's one for Cloud. That's all you'll get. That's all you'll get. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ooh, one and one. One and one. The final matchup. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. There it is. <laughs> Bad business idea. Do you know how Raising Cane's pretty much only sells chicken tenders? Well, this is a sandwich shop that exclusively sells one club sandwich. You want a BLT? Get out of here. We just need the one. But it will be the greatest club sandwich that you have ever tasted in your entire life. The ham, the turkey, the bacon, lettuce, tomato, bread that is always perfectly toasted, and some godlike aioli that just makes it perfect every time. And since the one sandwich is all that they do, it'll be done before you even finish ordering. But that's not all. Inside the sandwich shop is a full on nightclub. So after you get your sandwich, you can throw it back like girl on TikTok. And the name Club Sandwich. Call of Duty sucks at naming things. Let me just run you through the COD game. We started out with COD 1, 2, 3, then 4 being subtitled Modern Warfare. Then we got World at War, sure. Then Modern Warfare 2. And this is when things started getting weird because COD kind of fractured into two separate series under the COD brand. We had Black Ops, then MW3, then Black Ops 2, then Call of Duty Ghost, then Advanced Warfare, then Black Ops 3, then Infinite Warfare. Could have called it Space Warfare or Future Warfare and it would have made more sense. Then came World War II, which nobody asked for, made Black Ops 4 and used tallies instead of Roman numerals, Modern Warfare, not to be confused with COD 4 Modern Warfare, even though it's the fourth Modern Warfare, <sighs> then Black Ops Cold War because they didn't know what 5 would look like, then Vanguard because they needed to make another World War II one that nobody wanted, and finally, the fifth Modern Warfare game, Modern Warfare 2. <sighs> Bad sport idea. I've been watching the Call of Duty League recently and it made me realize just how stupid a lot of our current sports are. The majority are just take ball from one place to the other, which is pretty boring. So I propose competitive laser tag. You have like a venue that switches up the map. Like you have stuff you can climb different angles and you can do like search and destroy. But the whole thing is in like an arena, like, like a boxing stadium. And instead of a ring, it's like a laser tag map. And like it wouldn't have like the goofy, like weird plasticky laser tag vest. Like it would look cool, but like it, it's still, it's still laser tag. I feel like competitive laser tag would go crazy. Bad social media idea. So it's a full like social media app designed to connect conspiracy theorists so they don't need to like make a Reddit or a Discord for whatever like weird ideas they have. And the site would just be one like Twitch chat basically where everyone just throws like their craziest conspiracy theories out there. And you get like Twitch chat badges next to your name for like the specific ones that you believe in. It's like you have the flat earth badge and the moon landing was faked badge and then every saturday the site would host debates between one conspiracy and an even crazier alternative conspiracy like moon landing deniers versus moon deniers or like flat earthers versus dinosaur earthers it would just be a crazy back and forth of like one-upping how crazy each person could be and i think it would be really fun to watch bad musical artist idea dj khaled life there's Roblox. Bad map idea. So it's a map in an arena shooter, or like COD multiplayer or something. But instead of it being complexly designed with sight lines and movement in mind, it's just a straight line. And not just any straight line, but a highway filled with cars that explode. Now we'll throw in a few buildings here and there so it's not like completely unplayable. But if you're running an RPG, you can just get a team wipe off spawn by just shooting at the other cars. And of course, I'm talking about the border crossing map in MW2. Active Vision, what were you 
thinking? Would you rather be able to transform into any person in the entire world, copy their voice, their mannerisms, everything, like a real life deep fake of literally anyone you want, and it would even work with people that don't actually exist, like you could swap genders, become yourself in giga chad form, something like that, or would you rather be able to transform into any animal in the world? You could become a bird and fly, you could become a fish and breathe underwater, or you could go to a zoo and play Among Us with the penguins. Bad superpower idea. You get the ability to teleport, but only once and you can't choose where. You are sent to a completely random place on the earth on land because the chances of water are very high, but it's like a one-time use. It is a panic teleport. Now there are some uses for this. You could potentially teleport out of harm's way if you're being held at gunpoint. You could escape prison. You could have just a god tier game of hide and seek, but you could very easily end up in Antarctica, the Russian or Canadian wilderness, or a country with some less than friendly policy about immigration, or you could teleport right back into the same kind of situation you were trying to escape. But I do know one type of person that this would be really good for, and it's the people who are like insane at GeoGuessr. Combo idea. Call of Duty and Sega Bass Fishing. So it's a multiplayer shooter, but you have to fish to get your guns. And all of the guns are just fish. And not like cartoony, like weapon looking fish. Like this isn't like a Valorant skin where the gun's a dragon. No, I'm talking a photorealistic rainbow trout is your SMG. So at the beginning of the match, you literally have to just sit at a pond at spawn and just fish for your guns so you can play the game. And you can upgrade your rod with different baits and different attachments to attract different weapon types but certain guns slash fish you can only get by using other guns slash fish as bait so if you want the game's rocket launcher which would be like a shark or something you have to sacrifice your current gun and like tiny fish would be like grenades like a minnow is like a smoke or something what do we call it cod if the last two games you played combined what would it look like i'll go first the last two games that i played were sonic frontiers and modern warfare 2 so it would be like an open world platformer fps with speed power and multiplayer and no there's no way it, it, it's it's saints row 4 it, it, it's saints row 4 how is it saints row 4 that, that's i'm done Bad game idea. So it's a tycoon type of management simulation game like Roller Coaster Tycoon or SimCity or something like that, but it's based on making a country. So you'd have different scenarios where different countries want different things and you take over the government to build it up and complete all the objectives. Some scenarios are to build up cities, others want you to build armies, and as you progress, you get access to different things that you can build for this country. But after you finish all the scenarios, the countries that you built go to war with each other and it turns into an FPS where you have to pick one of the countries that you built and you have to go through each other country and conquer them. And the levels are all based on what you actually did to each country. Bad movie idea. I want to see a live action Crash Bandicoot movie. Hear me out. It would probably be really bad, but it would be funny. Every video game adaptation these days is either really good or really bad. So I think it would be funny to just see what they try with the source material. Like, I feel like half the movie would just be him running and smashing boxes somehow. Instead of using CG for Crash, they could use the weird Crash mascot that like showed up at the game awards and like get a bunch of ads and just have him like menacingly running around for like 90 minutes also neocortex will be played by tom holland would you rather never have to eat or never have to sleep this is the one would you rather that i have been thinking about for like 10 plus years because there are so many obvious benefits and downsides to both options so for this scenario we'll say that you still can eat you still can sleep if you choose either option but you literally don't need to at all for your body to function at 100 percent capacity Never getting tired would allow you to be so much more productive. You'd never be groggy, you'd feel better in general, and have an extra like third of your life unlocked that doesn't have to be sleeping. But during that one third, everyone else is still sleeping and like a lot of stores are closed. So you kind of just have to stay at home. But then again, not eating would save you so much money and would make you the perfect person for any survival scenario. But eating is a very social thing and you still are probably gonna have to do it a lot anyway or like watch as other people eat. And things still taste good so you probably still will so personally i'm picking sleep bad superpower idea you can give your current enemy a normal punch or you can double it and give it to the next person so the only way that this one can be useful is if like you show up to like 20 fights and then only use it on like the 21st fight because like it would get to like a really big point where like there's a lot of damage being dealt but like you just would have to wait a while i imagine the hero that would have this power would be like this legendary fighter that shows up to the battle and just watches from the side 
sidelines with like a menacing look and everyone thinks they're this like mega badass but like they literally can't do anything because they haven't doubled their power enough to be useful in the fight bad business idea crypto anything related or remotely adjacent to crypto i feel like every day there's a new crypto scam or like money laundering scheme through crypto and it's like mainstream people that are involved in it every time we had logan paul with crypto zoo someone in phase does a new pump and dump every month so why are we still doing anything with crypto like i understand the benefits to it but even ftx one of the biggest crypto exchanges was just a ponzi scheme nfts didn't work and most of them are worthless now and ironically the only good nft project i saw was from logan paul with 99 originals not crypto zoo so i think it's time we try something else the crypto scabs are worse than i thought i made a video a couple days ago talking about how shady crypto is the currency not the apex character and not a day later i get multiple emails and offers from different coins and crypto companies all asking me to promote their stuff and i'm not going to show these on the screen because it would only end up actually promoting them like they want me to but one was asking me to share their coin one was asking me if i wanted to turn my videos into nfts but it was instant and the fact that these happened instantly after i made a video about crypto implies that these are being sent to everyone making videos about crypto doing literally no research onto the people that they're actually offering which is a huge red flag if you're willing to let literally anyone promote your thing odds are you're not that trustworthy and i guarantee you people are taking these deals which only makes the scams get bigger cyberpunk 2077 is back and i called it so unless you've been living under a rock for the past few weeks you've probably seen or heard about cyberpunk edgerunners an anime by studio trigger set in the cyberpunk universe and what this show did was demonstrate the world building that already existed in the game buried beneath all the bugs so now everybody that watched the show is playing the game again because they fell in love with the world from the show and wanted to get some revenge on Adam Smasher. But I called it. Back at launch, I made a video on my old YouTube channel saying that Cyberpunk would be the next new Vegas in the sense that both games had a really rocky launch with a lot of bugs, but after the bugs were fixed, people would realize that there was something special in the game. Now, in terms of RPGs, Fallout is definitely the better game, but Cyberpunk has a really cool story to tell, and I'm glad that it's finally getting the second chance that it deserved. Now, don't get me wrong, it is still far from perfect, but now that it's playable, I can finally say that I was right. Right. Who are you dressed as today? David Martinez from Cyberpunk Edge Runners. A character who does not die and is alive the entire series. Yeah, no, he's dope. I, Fiber, really. What is the the weirdest thing you've seen today? Uh, dude, there's a lot of things. We went to an 18, like, guess the age anime slash hentai. It was uh very questionable. The entire experience. Did, did you guess the age? I didn't. I was really bad at it. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, ponder this orb. Thoughts? There's a lot to see here. You seen the orb? Whoa, there's a lot more going on. The longer I look at it, the more there's actually happening here. Would you rather have the ability to teleport anywhere you've been before, like a fast travel in real life, except when you do, you have to sit through like a five minute loading screen with some random screenshots from your life and like the area you're going to with tips like be careful for raiders in Columbus. But like the five minute loading screen only exists for you. For everyone else, you'll just appear in the new location the second you leave or have the ability to stop time infinitely. You can do it anytime you want for however long you want and you can even unfreeze certain things at will. So for instance, you and your buddy want to spend three years 1v1ing on Rust, you can unfreeze your friend in an Xbox 360 and there you go. And nothing ages when you're in the time freeze either, but you still get tired and still need to eat at like the normal rate that you would otherwise. Bad movie idea. Every time there's a genie in a movie, they almost always make the wish not turn out how the person wishing intended. Like the person wishes they were better at swimming and they just turn him into a fish. So this movie would follow that genie, like the one who just like takes everything super literally and like is very much just like having fun with it. And it'll be like a mockumentary going over like the 10,000 years or whatever the genie's trapped in the lamp and would follow like all these different stories of people that the genie just screwed over thanks to their own wish. And then in the end, the genie's let out and like runs to be like president of the United States or something. We have peaked with graphics. You look at any game released by a major studio in the past few years, and I mean, how much more could we realistically go? You have COD looking like real life. You have Elden Ring being beautiful. Like, look at it. And then you have stuff like Hi-Fi Rush looking like an anime. Like, since the dawn of gaming, we have been obsessed with graphics. But now we're at this point where once you go in Unreal Engine 5 with the RTX shaders on, where do we 
go next? Do we go for style like Hi-Fi Rush and Guilty Gear? Or do we start focusing more on gameplay and less on graphics like the new wave of indie boomer shooters? A lot of people share the sentiment that gaming has become stale as of late. So now that we've come so close to the limit for graphics, do we change direction entirely? Or do we somehow go further? Die Hard is a Christmas movie and therefore this movie that I made is also a Christmas movie. Now I have everything I ever wanted. A hot boyfriend, a dog, and Christmas. Oh! I just woke up in the morning. I have so much money, my ex-girl is dead. I could not be happier. All of them have wives and families, so we'll have to make sure to only kill them a little bit. Otherwise, we'll ruin Christmas. I'm Nick Kristoff. Full movies on my YouTube channel. Would you rather always know what time it is or never know what time it is? Like every second that passes, your brain is acutely aware of, your mind is like one, two, three, all the time. Like you have a literal clock constantly in your brain, in your thoughts, or you physically can't comprehend the concept of time. And you just have to hope that whatever time you get to work is on time. Can we meet at 9.30? Maybe, I don't know, I hope so. Bad movie idea. So it's a rom-com with someone who has DID or it's like a Freaky Friday situation where two people are sharing the same body, but they switch at different times and neither realizes it. And each of these personalities wants a different love interest. So the first one will be talking with the love interest and then the second will take over and there'll be like a lot of comedic moments where it's like, I have something to tell you, something I've been feeling for a long time, I am leaving. And the personalities are played by different actors. And like you have the actors that play the personalities be polar opposites. You have like one played by like Kevin Hart and the other by Kevin James. And at the end they like figure out, oh, they've been in the same body the whole time. And there's an M. Night Shyamalan-esque twist where it's revealed that they were actually like Emma Stone the whole time. And you can call it something cheesy like Double Date. That movie idea, it's a Christmas movie that starts off like one of those generic Hallmark rom-coms, but immediately like the main girl is just capped in the head and it turns into like a spy thriller with like the boyfriend trying to track down the killer. And yes, I made this one. I have so much money, my ex-girl is dead. I could not be happier. You see this ADK? All I had to do was sell one cocaine. Christmas Eve isn't until tomorrow. What are you doing? I don't know. Whatever you do on a Friday night. I need a vodka. Super size. Sure thing. Ditches first. There's something I want to do. What's that? <laughs> oh, I'm bleeding out. I'm left for dead too. Just like that hit. 2009 game, Left 4 Dead 2. The full thing's on my YouTube channel. Bad app idea. It's basically Google Maps, except you can leave Elden Ring and Dark Souls-esque messages geolocated. So when you pass that spot on GPS, you'll like get a notification saying whatever the message is. So like before a GameStop, you'll just see Fort. Night. And in front of a Taco Bell, you'll see strong foe ahead. They're like likely dung. And it would be a similar system to Dark Souls. It could just be the straight up like port of the Dark Souls system. We have to pick from a set of dialogue options. And that's one of the things that I'd love to have like a HUD for. Like with AR glasses, you could literally just see the messages like loading off the side of the road. Like as you're approaching the beach, it just says like time for crab. There's no bit for this one. I just think it would be really cool. Somebody please make this a thing. And if this is already a thing, please tell me I need this. Elon Musk buying Twitter has to be the funniest thing that has happened on the internet on so many levels. So immediately he says comedy is now legal on Twitter, which he then contradicts by banning people after they start to troll him. And then he added a feature where people can now pay $8 a month to be verified as this like savior to the platform because Twitter isn't profitable. And people instantly abuse this feature by making troll accounts that started impersonating celebrities and brands, which tanked stock prices of different brands because of the things that people were tweeting. Like every day it just gets worse. This is like watching a car crash and I'm gonna continue to watch because it is one heck of a show. Would you rather every time you look at an animal, any animal, even a, a picture or a video of that animal, it dies. Or every time you look at an animal, it immediately beelines to your current position and jumps on top of you for the next 48 hours. Same thing, like you could be watching a nature documentary about snakes, boom, snakes are coming for you. And this includes bugs, this includes fish, literally 
everything. Both would be extremely inconvenient, but I think I'm going for option one because the thought of like every mosquito coming for my face is terrifying. I just hope nobody decides to show me a picture of their dog. Why is Fall Guys suddenly so successful? If you remember back in 2020, Fall Guys came out and was a decently big deal until Among Us hit Twitch like crack hit low-income communities. Fall Guys had that perfect addictive battle royale formula that Fortnite had along with a battle pass that was included in the $20 price tag of the game. But it was exclusive to PC and PlayStation, making it less accessible than Among Us who was able to steal the limelight away from Fall Guys because it had a free mobile version with support for up to 10 players and cross-platform support which created the perfect environment for the Twitch collab meta. But Epic Games saw the potential for the formula that Fall Guys had created and purchased their parent company back in March of 2021. Now all they had to do was add more content and wait. Then in June of this year, they found the perfect time to strike. There was a drought of good multiplayer games, so they relaunched Fall Guys as free to play and cross platform, bringing back old players that had already enjoyed the game and introducing new players who could play it completely free. Now these guys are falling more than ever. Bad business idea. Fancy McDonald's. Remember when McDonald's used to be fun and whimsical, but now they look like corporate and sad? I say we bring back the old McDonald's design and repurpose the current McDonald's as fancy McDonald's. Every menu item triple the price. There's a dress code. And it all comes served on fancy plates with random leaves and stuff for presentation. The food's exactly the same. It's still like a Big Mac. It's just the atmosphere that you're paying extra for. Like imagine you and the boys going out for a for a classy dining experience at Mickey D's Fancy. Would you rather every year have to get in a street brawl with a professional boxer that lasts for at least a minute or every five years get challenged to a duel and participate like a western showdown? The boxer could never kill you but could leave you like inches from death but the duel you have to kill the other person to win or you die. Personally I think I'd take the boxer here. I, it wouldn't be fun but at least you maybe get a viral video out of it, but both are pretty close in terms of me not wanting to do either of them. Making cursed bread, part three. Last time we substituted the water in the bread recipe for Baja Blast, but today we're using Mark Zuckerberg's favorite condiment, Sweet Baby Rays. I'm not looking forward to this one. Ooh, this yeah. is awful. <laughs> I gotta get in that. <laughs> this is unpleasant. Yeah, I hopefully. This is extremely. It better be. This is like a fun projectile. Ooh! Watch, I miss it lands on the floor. Now, this one did not turn out as well as the others. It was hard on the outside and doughy on the inside, not in a good way. This is the barbecue. Look at it. Ew. I am very not excited for this. Bottoms up, I guess. Clink it up. I mean, it tastes like barbecue sauce. That's not pleasant. I took too big of a piece. This bread was a crime. The police are waiting outside. They're ready to escort me to jail. No trial. That's what I deserve. Zero out of ten. I made 15 more of these bad boys on my YouTube channel, so you can check that out if you want. Combo idea. As a larger man, I love me some hot wing from time to time, but my biggest pet peeve is having to choose between ranch or hot sauce. So I propose a mixture of ranch and hot sauce. I'm talking like pre-packaged, so it's the perfect blend of the two. The wing game would be on another level. So what's stopping like Hidden Valley from just going a little wild? But since this is food, I could try it right now. So I'm gonna be combining Truff hot sauce with Hidden Valley Ranch. Truff was kind enough to send me some stuff for this video. I mean, just look at this. And they have been awfully buddy-buddy with Hidden Valley on Twitter. So hey, I'm just saying it would go crazy. Get that in there. This is gonna be good. Get a little mix going here. I have two pieces of chicken. Just gonna pour this on here. Do like a little drizzle, make it all fancy like. Look at that. Gordon Ramsay, you would be impressed. Now let's let's give it a taste. Mm. Oh yes, bro, I need a bottle of this. S tier, please make this. Guys, I think one of my combo ideas is already coming to life. So on Friday, I made a video talking about combining hot sauce with ranch, like as its own thing. It's like ranch hot sauce. And the two brands that I used in that video responded in the comments. Hidden Valley pulled up. The Ranch Hidden Valley. Mr. Valley himself. Or Mrs. Valley, I don't know. And so did Truff. So as any rational man would do, I went to Twitter. And what did I see on the 
Bird app, Hidden Valley, and Truff replying to each other a lot. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like confirmation to me. Finally, the perfect wings shall be mine. This is a true victory for gamers. I went to fix sports games. Every year, we get a new FIFA, we get a new Madden, we get a new MLB The Show, whatever, and every year, they're the same game as last year. But we've grown past the need for yearly releases because so many other games have already proved that you could be more successful with just one game that you keep updating. Like, look at Fortnite. Look at it. If EA just made Madden or FIFA as a standalone game and made a new one like every five years when it needed a new engine and had like DLC for like each year's teams, it would do so much better. If I am dying to play FIFA, I'll just go to GameStop and get like FIFA 13 for two bucks. There is no difference. Tell me what is different besides the players between FIFA 13 and FIFA 23 that's coming out. Like there's nothing new in these games. So just make one and throw a bunch of cool mini games and game modes, better features that improve the game and boom, everyone cares again. Bad theory idea. Flat earthers are about to be seething because I'm about to one up them with the flat moon theory. That's right. My conspiracy theory is that the moon is flat. Since scientifically moon orbits the earth, we know this. We probably just only see the flat side. <laughs> <laughs> you telling me, you telling me there's a dark side of the moon? Yeah, duh, it's on the other side. <laughs> moon landing deniers are probably the only ones that could get behind this. I don't think anybody else is going to be willingly a flat mooner. Bad sport idea. Football too, baby. And I'm not talking European football. I'm talking real red, white, and blue American Patriot football. But, but like the sequel. So what makes football two so different than football classic, you may inquire? Well, for starters, there's two times the end zones. The field would be like an octagon and there are three different game modes that you can choose in football too. The first is standard football except you have to score in the parallel end zones. Like the Patriots get these two and the Browns get these two. And this will force both teams to keep the ball in the center of the field but will also give the coaches more strategic options on how to play the game. Game mode two is a 2v2 where you have two teams combined and two balls in play. And each ball can be on either offense and defense at the same time. So you can be playing both sides of the ball simultaneously and the play won't end until both balls are on the ground. Then the final game mode is normal football, except there's just two games being played parallel to each other simultaneously on the same field. And you can intercept the ball from the other game. Making a movie in 24 hours. I met up with my friends in the morning with nothing but a time limit and a dream. It's a horror movie, POV of the killer, and he's just like really bad at killing. It's like a mockumentary. I want to be the first. We came up with a rough idea of what our movie was going to be because we didn't have time for a script. We're making the new Morbius, Morbius. So we went straight to filming. We're getting B-roll. Here's how the scene's gonna go. She's gonna come in and sit down. The person walked by and looked directly at the camera. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hey yo, Frisbee? Hey, yo. Come, yes. <laughs> After filming was done, we went to McDonald's to celebrate. McDonald's. But even though they were done, I still had to edit the entire night. I just have to edit everything. I'm already very tired and I don't plan on sleeping tonight. Just it's 6 a.m. and I think we're done. That means we actually did it faster than 24 hours. With the movie complete and my sanity draining, I held a premiere event and it was a smash hit. Yeah! If you want to see more of the movie as well as some more behind the scenes or on my YouTube channel. This is my mouse. It has buttons. This is Joe. Johnny's mouse is stupid. He doesn't like that my mouse has buttons. This is a tree. The squirrels are oh. gaming. This is a hammer. Still usable. Thanks. Still play Valorant. Look at all the bits are still in there. Stop what you're doing right now. I need to show you the funniest speed run that I've ever seen because the majority of it is literally spent AFK. What I'm talking about is the low percent speed run for the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Now this is the record for Twilight Princess's any percent run and this is the low percent run. Now the difference between any percent and low percent is that while any percent aims for the fastest possible time, no matter what, low percent aims for the fastest time with the fewest items picked up. In the current run, that means eight items in the whole game. But the reason this run is literally five times Times longer than the any percent run is that in order for this to work link has to stare at rupees for over 11 hours now the reason for this is that the animation where link stares at the rupee is actually botched it doesn't actually play the last frame where he returns to the original spot of the animation so instead of the animation just looping he slowly and i'm talking slowly drifts backwards and this allows for one of the most impractical clips in any speed running which avoids the necessary items but takes 10 hours to pull off one of my favorite tropes 
works in different shows is the character that one person can see but nobody else can. Like a hallucination that's actually real for some like magic or paranormal reason. And every single time that this trope happens in like an anime show, movie, whatever, there's almost always that one scene where the main character is talking to like this magical like otherworldly person and another dude just walks in and is like, hey, who, who are you talking to, bro? Whoa, schizo moment. But honestly, if I saw a dude just talking to himself, I would not question it for a second. Literally, the only thing a protagonist in one of these shows has to do is just put in headphones. Like, people just walk around and talk, like, even on Discord calls with nothing but a pair of AirPods in. And I don't question it for a second. You could be talking with God himself, and I'd assume you're just, like, running D&D &D while you get Starbucks. Bad game idea. It's an open-world GTA-style sandbox shooter, but it takes place over the entire course of human history following a single bloodline you'll play as a caveman then like an ancient egyptian or mesopotamian then like someone from greece like a spartan and then as like a roman and each story mission will be like some major event in human history as you progress further and further and after you finish those events in history your character the map and all of your like weapons and vehicles will all change to like whatever the next era is once you finally make it to the modern day you'll have a full gta style city but it doesn't end there the story then splits into different possible future timelines with like a standard sci-fi future then like a cyberpunk timeline then a diesel punk timeline and like all the different iterations of what history could be you have like a different open world different weapons different characters all exploring those different possibilities and once you beat each mission you unlock them in multiplayer so you and your friends can literally go and mess around in whatever open world you fancy bad item idea it's a gun that's a pacifist like the gun literally doesn't want to kill people and it will one shot anything like it'll do the maximum damage have the best stats in the game but it won't let you shoot it so like if you want to use the gun you have to convince the gun to let you fire it and even if you like get it so it will fire you have to like convince it to fire at enemies and like you have to do it individually for each enemy that you want to kill the gun needs like a million different reasons why the enemy needs to die and why the gun needs to be the thing that actually kills them and only after like 10 speech checks will it let you kill one guy. Making cursed pizza part one. Now you may have seen me make cursed bread in the past and to do so we replace the water in the recipe with different drinks. This time we're taking it a step further by doing the same thing for the dough and adding some uh, unorthodox toppings. Our first one is with Coke coffee. We're making a normal pizza with marinara sauce and cheese with Coke coffee. Help me. Look at that bro. Looking like no. That looks roughly pizza shape. This looks like pizza. And there we go. Mozzarella cheese. Look at that. There, boom. That's a good pizza. That looks like a pizza. Time is up. Let's see how our pizza turned out. Oh man. It's review time. I think this one will be fine. I can vaguely taste the coffee, which is kind of throwing me off. Oh wait, now I taste it. That's edible. Definitely edible. I give it an edible out of 10. Check out the full video for more. Bad movie idea. There's a guy and a girl. They meet, they fall in love, they get married. You get the picture. But when they go on their honeymoon, they get separated. They're both like American and go to Europe or something. And their phones like aren't working because the cell powers or some like movie logic. So they start searching for each other and they can't find one another. And in their efforts to find each other, they end up going on two completely different but equally crazy side quests. Like the guy accidentally joins the mafia and like goes on a heist. And the girl accidentally like gets involved in like a power struggle in a foreign country and they keep having like near misses where they like almost find each other until the end where they spark an entire geopolitical conflict and end it because they're both on like different sides and in love and like there's a dance scene at the end because why not last year i made one of those terrible hallmark christmas movies in a day and since it's that time of the year again i figured i'd share it with you and the full thing's on my main channel but i thought i'd share the beginning of it with you now please rotate your phone and enjoy every christmas has its christmas man it sure is christmasy christmas Christmas around here. Holly, is that you? Nick Crystal. I haven't seen you since high school. I thought you were an important big city girl now. I am, but I'm home for the holidays to find the true meaning of Christmas. Oh great. I used to have a crush on you back in high school, but I used to be ugly back then. Yeah, you were ugly, but now you're not. What's your job? Well, I sell reindeer and Christmas trees to the people of this town. Okay, that means you have zero earnings. LMAO, goodbye. 
combo idea. Solitaire and Halo. So it's an FPS, but your loadout is based on a game of Solitaire that you have to play in the bottom right corner of your screen. And by making moves in Solitaire, you can get different guns and abilities. Like moving a king to a blank space will give you a jetpack. Putting an ace in its spot will restock your grenades. And beating the game would give you the game's equivalent to like a rocket launcher or an energy sword or something. Like an instant kill weapon. So the single player would be this really cool, really innovative, really creative way to play a game. But the multiplayer would probably just be people camping to try and finish a game of solitaire so they can just one hit everybody on the map. Bad movie idea. At the beginning of the movie, this guy buys a house for super cheap. And the reason that it's so cheap is that the house is haunted. But this guy does not believe in ghosts, is the least superstitious person in the world. So he just does not care whatsoever. But it really is haunted. And the ghost being a little goober immediately decides to start messing with this guy. But he is unfazed. Like it starts with stuff falling off the shelves and the guy's just like, dang, these shelves aren't level. Gotta fix that, I guess. So the haunts start ramping up more and more, like stuff's floating, writing is appearing on the walls in blood. But the guy just does not care until the ghost like reveals itself to the guy and he just thinks they're a normal person and builds like a wholesome relationship with them. Bad game idea. It's a stealth spy game, kind of like Hitman, but instead of each mission being to take out a target, you have a bunch of different objectives, like stealing something in a heist, passing intel to another party, planning a bomb or like a wiretap, activating something, like and it's all different objectives. And it's similar to the recent Hitman games in the sense that it's almost a sandbox, allowing you to complete the mission however you want. But the objectives get increasingly more and more complex and goofy as the game progresses. So it starts with you like stealing a painting and ends with you planning a bomb in one building to draw a target out from another building who has a key that you need to steal, which unlocks a safe that holds the information on the target that you need to protect. Hitman 4, do that. Bad movie idea. So you got a guy who's just living his best life. He has the perfect job, perfect wife, perfect life. Like stereotypical American dream. He's got his wedding photos as his home screen on his phone. But everything is not how it seems. The beginning of the movie shows the first day, this guy going to work, living his life, whatever. But the next day, he goes to work just like he did yesterday. And the building he works at is just gone. Like there is just a blank space, like a Minecraft chunk error where his work used to be. So the guy sees this and he tries to call his boss, he tries to call his wife, he tries to call anybody that he can, but nobody picks up. And he's like, what, what, what's going on? Like, did I miss a memo? Like, what, what am I supposed to do? So he rushes home, but when he gets home, same thing, his house, gone, just a blank space. So he tries to call his wife, but now when he looks in her phone, her contact info isn't saved. Like her name is nowhere to be found. And even stranger, when he goes to his home screen, the picture of him and his wife from his wedding, it's just him, she's not there. So now he has to figure out what's going on as more and more parts of his life start to disappear. I used to work at a gas station and this is an actual interaction that I have with the customer. This guy just storms in. So I go straight to customer service mode. I'm like, hi, what can I do for you today? And immediately the guy just says, do you know who won the lottery? And I was, I was taken aback by this because that's a very weird thing to storm into a store to ask. So I was just like, uh, no, I don't. And I was about to say like, oh, I can look it up for you if you really need me to. But I didn't even get the chance because he angrily said, you should have known that and then walks out. Huh? Like that man could have taken five seconds to just Google who won the lottery if he really needed to know that bad. But instead, he drove to a gas station. What is the context behind it? Like, what was this guy's story? Like, was it a dare? Was he trying to, like, heist the money from whoever won? I have no idea, but it lives in my mind rent free. Hypothetical time. In the future, humans discover how to splice their genes with other animals, and now the world is full of, like, hybrid people. Weebs all go out and get cat ears. People start swapping genders, and furries do their thing. And then colleges start offering the ability to have have like one free change done to all their students. Like it's like a diversity thing, but it is permanent or otherwise costs like a hundred K to a million dollars. Would you do it? Honestly, I think it would be sick to have like wings and be able to fly or like be able to breathe underwater or something. So if you would do it, what would you pick? And if you did it, would you still be human? Bad game idea. So it's an MMO FPS and every single thing that you do in this game is the most tedious thing that you've ever done. Like if you want to be able to kill any enemy in this game whatsoever, you literally just need to grind the same quest over and over again. The same activities, the same missions. You have to do them like 20 times before you can even see like a, a, an incremental 
exponential increase in your ability to do anything. And after farming these same things over and over, maybe then you'll get the chance for the gun that you want. But the game will have these really cool raids that require six people all at the top of their game, working in unison, trying their best to like overcome these puzzles and beat these bosses in the coolest combination of co-op multiplayer that you've ever seen in your life. But in order to even attempt it, you need to do all the other BS like a hundred times and then call it Destiny 2. I hate Destiny 2. It's my favorite game. Bad roller coaster idea. I went to Six Flags Great Adventure for the first time a couple days ago and I witnessed an atrocity to joy and whimsy. The Green Lantern roller coaster can respectfully burn to the ground. The whole idea of the Green Lantern ride is that it's a coaster where you're standing up the whole ride. Now in theory, that sounds cool and all. It sounds like, oh, it's a fun little coaster concept. But in practice, this ride is the spawn of Satan. When you're at an amusement park, you're on your feet all day. You're walking around, you're waiting in line. And how does the Green Lantern ride address this little issue of amusement parks? By making your legs cramp as a feature. When you go through the loop on this ride, the G-force pushes all of the weight and all of the blood in your body to your legs, causing them to cramp in the middle of the ride. You are screaming, not from fear, not from excitement, but from pain. And when you get off, it stays. The rest of the day, you just have a debuff on your legs. I love bad movies, which makes sense considering that I give so many bad movie ideas. If you've ever seen anything like The Amazing Bulk or Who Killed Captain Alex, you know exactly why. There's a certain charm that low budget movies with these lofty ambitions have, especially if they take themselves seriously, because it creates this symphony of chaos that is so much more entertaining than like an eight out of 10 movie. This graph is the best way that illustrates it. On one side, you have high budget budget, high quality movies and shows, and on the other, low budget and low quality movies. Now in the middle you have stuff like Morbius where it's just boring and formulaic, but once you pass the mediocre valley, that's where the true entertainment arises. And over here is where I wish more movies would operate, because imagine if a Marvel movie had a scene like this. Just the over the top action is... It's beautiful. Burger. On Tuesday, I said that the worst fast food restaurant in the world was Burger King. But I asked you guys to give me a worse option, and you did. I could confidently say that I was wrong, and I will gladly admit that, because the worst fast food restaurant is actually Long John Silver. I have never once seen a single person go to a Long John Silver's. The parking lot is always empty. I don't even know if the employees are there half the time. And the only reason that I've ever been to one in my entire life is because it was also a KFC and I wanted the KFC part of it. I've heard conspiracies that it's literally just a money laundering scheme. And honestly, that makes more sense than it's a successful restaurant because ain't nobody going to Long John Silver's. And if they claim that they have, they are an imposter. What's the weirdest thing that you've seen all day? I think a shorter list would be what's normal things I've seen all day. <laughs> the weirdest thing I've seen, not weird in a bad way. I saw a guy like dressed head to toe as beans. Like Bush's baked beans. Yes. <laughs> Has anybody asked you to perform a song as Miku? Okay, no, and I'm really glad they haven't because I would not have anything good to show them. <laughs> Could you perform a song as me? <laughs> No. No. I mean, not any of Miku's songs. Could you perform Firework by Katy Perry as Miku? Yeah. <laughs> just gotta ignite the light and let it shine. Just own the night like the 4th of July. Thank you. Oh, God, <laughs> that was amazing. Could you uh, tell me that I'm banned from Dave and Buster's and that I can never set foot on the premises ever again? You are hereby banned from Dave and Buster's on account of public indecency. Bad movie idea. It's a movie about a guy with the power of invisibility, but it's the bad kind that you can't turn off. And normally a movie with this premise would be really introspective about how you can never truly be yourself anymore or whatever. But not this time, because the guy that this happens to is just an insane troll and literally does not care. So the entire movie is just this guy going around and messing with people and doing like reality breaking pranks on them. Like it would start off, he'd do a heist and it would go flawlessly. Then he'd like go to bars and start just shoving random people starting bar fights left and right. And then he'd try to go even further by like harassing a random CEO and just gaslighting him for an entire day. Like making him think he's haunted or something. And instead of being called the invisible man, it would be called the invisible jack.
jackass. Combo idea. The Binding of Isaac and Saints Row 4. So what it would be is like an open world GTA type city with the comedic tone of Saints Row 4, but you can go in every single building in the game and each building plays like a roguelite where the inside of each building is randomly generated and plays from a top-down perspective, although being rendered in 3D, kind of like Dead Ops Arcade and Black Ops. So with power-ups, it can switch to like first or third person, but the plot would revolve around you liberating the city from a rival gang and taking control one building at a time. And as you go, you would build your arsenal of guns and really cool powers. Bad movie idea. It's a romantic comedy between a ghost and a ghost hunter, but the ghost hunter doesn't actually realize that it's a ghost at first. So the movie starts, you have this ghost hunter and they're hunting a ghost. They think they catch this ghost, but it actually possesses a random passerby. So it turns out the ghost has feelings for the ghost hunter and while possessing someone else, they start going on dates and begin to fall in love. But about halfway through the movie, the ghost starts to feel bad about like lying that they're not a ghost and eventually reveals to the ghost hunter that they're a little goblin ghoul. And at first, the ghost hunter is really pissed because like that's, that's their whole deal. They hunt ghosts, but they end up continuing the relationship and the ghost ends up helping the ghost hunting effort from there on out. Combo idea, Modern Warfare 2 and Goat Simulator. The game will be a multiplayer shooter where you play as the funny goat from Goat Simulator and the movement in the game would be this super buggy and just hilarious goat simulator movement but all of like the shooting mechanics would be fine-tuned and perfect so like you'd be running around the map glitching all over the place but like people are still hard scoping you regardless until you end up flying across the entire map at Mach 10 and like quick scope them from midair there would also be a battle royale mode that would just barely work where you could like traverse the entire map in a matter of seconds and the entire game like all the goats would stand on their hind legs like they'd literally just rip an animation from a cod game of like you standing and running and shooting but it's just a goat doing it and only when you crouch does the goat go to all fours but they still have like a gun just at the bottom of their hand easily a game of the year candidate bad game idea actually you know what good game idea it's an open world rpg where you have a bunch of npcs giving you quests kind of like fallout skyrim whatever but none of the npcs have set dialogue other than a couple like mainline quest things instead ai chatbots control their dialogue with realistic text to speech that allows you to just talk to the npcs like they're an actual person like the limit of rpg games that make things like dnd still very viable is you can't do everything you want the world is cool but it's limited by dialogue options and once you go through all of them the cracks start to show but if all the npcs were able to just have infinite conversations with you it would be the most immersive game of all time like you could befriend anyone become enemies with anyone have anyone as your companion the options are limitless and all you have to do is set different personalities for the npcs add the morrowind friendship meter and the fallout new vegas reputation system and that's a free game of the year bad business idea so it's a shipping company but it's like one of those themed restaurants where the wait staff is just mean to you and roast you the whole time so like they just won't give you updates on your package if you ask where it is they'll be like i have no idea they'll like literally just lose it as a bit so like, you'll be expecting a package to arrive in miami and like it'll just stay in columbus ohio for like four weeks and then like you'll check the shipping again and it'll be in miami and then it'll be back in columbus for another day and then finally like they'll deliver it to you and when they finally do deliver it to you they'll smash it they'll bend it they'll break it they'll throw it through a window they might even try to hide it somewhere it will be the least convenient form of shipping ever if you order anything made of glass expect it to just be shattered by the time you finally get it then you could call it something goofy like fedex Award shows are almost always cringe, which is why I love them. Last night I streamed the Game Awards and there were so many goofy moments that reminded me why I love these shows so much. Not only was there this guy on the flute just putting his heart and soul into that performance, there was the most awkward Crash Bandicoot announcement ever, and then some kid snuck on stage and dedicated Outer Rings deserved, by the way, Game of the Year award to Bill Clinton. I think I want to nominate this award to uh, my reformed orthodox rabbi Bill Clinton. Thank you, everybody. The best part, though, is that these award shows take themselves so seriously. Like, everyone is dripped out of their minds trying to be professional, only for them to give an award to the cat game. Also, how did Splatoon 3 beat MW2 for multiplayer game? You can tell there's a Nintendo bias in the voting. But honestly, hosting a show like this seems so fun, and I would love to do something like that, because as cringe as it would inevitably be, it would be hysterical. Bad movie idea. So there's this group of hooligans 
Oregon's goons and ne'er-do-wells that run a scam in the Midwest. And what this scam entails is one of the gang poses as a man with a broken down car and sits on the side of an empty road waiting for some good-natured soul to come and give them some aid. But once someone comes to help them, the rest of the gang spawns in from like the tree line and they kidnap whoever comes to help and steal their car. So this story would follow a member of this gang participating in this scam over the course of a few years. And as the story progresses, this guy will slowly realize how terrible what they're doing is till eventually trying to escape with one of the people that they kidnapped. Monkey. Gorilla Tag is a great free VR title. The basic philosophy of movement relying entirely on your arms makes it the perfect demo for VR. And as such, I will be playing it with a Kinect and Google Cardboard. It does work. We're moving around in VR. This is honestly crazy. Oh, this is beyond scuffed. I got stuck in the tutorial. I'm gonna be stuck on the first bit of it. I, I just have to get one good jump and I'm there. Yes, okay. Okay, we should be able to do it. But after some rigorous effort. Okay, okay. I escaped. Okay, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm there. I did it. Oh, it's beautiful. Only to be smoked by literal children. And I made a whole video about this on my YouTube, so watch it. You, legally, you have to. Bad product idea. So it's a GPS, except the voice directions are just super unhelpful and like give you an unhealthy amount of sass. So like the actual map itself is just like Google Maps. You can follow the directions by just looking at it. But instead of Siri saying like, In 200 feet, turn right. You'll get right, 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 left, 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 straight, straight. Or if you miss a turn, it'll be like, well, guess we aren't turning there, huh? Do you think you just go past that turn and I won't notice? And you can change like the personality of it. One will be like your mom. One will be like your friend who's terrible at directions. One will be some cryptic old timey prospector who goes, well, it looks like you have to turn by the old crossing by the tree with three branches. You can also choose to shuffle the ball so it'll keep you on your toes. This is just for people who need some chaos in their life. Bad sport idea. Battle Royale in real life. The prison system's pretty bad, so why not make it worse by letting inmates compete in a hundred person battle royale fight to the death? With the winner gaining freedom or like a decrease in their sentence or something. This is the only moral way to do this. So you have prison Fortnite and you stream the whole thing live. I feel like Mr. Beast would somehow be the host of it. I took a hundred inmates and they're gonna battle to the death. Instead of the Super Bowl, we have the Blood Bowl sponsored by Mr. Beast Burger. Squid Game. Bad song idea. So it's a metal song about going to McDonald's. You know what? Scratch that. Make it a whole metal album. Like the first song is about you on the road driving to McDonald's. Then the second is about like making it there and going through the drive through And then like the milkshake machine is broken. So like the final song is about going to Wendy's instead and getting like a frosty. Yeah, this one is real and I made it. The golden arches betrayed. The album is called Drive Through to Hell and I made an entire video about it on my YouTube channel if you want to listen to it. How are we doing today? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Who are you cosplaying as today? I'm Junko Edoshima from Danganronpa. Question, if you're comfortable, can you ask me out on a date as your character? Or break up with me, your choice. Yeah, no, absolutely. Hi, sweetie. So I know like, we've been having fun and all, like just, you know, having fun, flirting, going out, you know, you buy me things, whatever. But uh, I'm bored, so we're done. Bye! Wha Thank you. <laughs> this, is, this is great. Playing VR chat with an Xbox 360 Kinect. Why would I do something like this? Well, in order to use full body trackers, if you have an Oculus or sorry, Meta Quest or Rift, you need to spend a minimum of $400. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have $400. What I do have is this. So to get this thing working, all you need to do is download the Kinect drivers from Microsoft and then some VR Kinect drivers. This one right here is free and open source, but I didn't know that existed until after buying this one for 15 bucks on Steam. So in game all I got to do is line up my avatar and it should work oh okay guess I can't be the funny bird from breath of the wild but with a different avatar it works fine now I can finally whip in Nene as God intended it's a little scuff but honestly it does the job and I made a whole video on my YouTube channel talking about this more in depth if you want to learn more but I think it's just so stupid and so cool that you can do this Kirby is the single most terrifying video game character in existence yeah th this guy this this little goblin this little creature and if you've ever beaten a Kirby game you'll know exactly what I'm talking about but look at this fun little 
little guy. He's so cute. He's so innocent. So whimsical. He's so merchandisable. Like if there is a female that loves video games, I guarantee you that they have at least one piece of Kirby merch somewhere in their room. But this little friend shaped blob of joy is a God killing abomination that has on several occasions awoken cosmic horrors that have nearly obliterated the entire universe all because he was a little hungry. Oh, someone ate his cake. This guy would rip everything and everyone you've ever held dear in your entire life away from you in a second if you touched his Big Mac. He has killed entire planets by accident. Just a little, just a little oopsie. But he looks like the JCPenney kids section. The Last of Us show is peak. Why has it taken this long for video game adaptations to just be good? Like all it takes is someone that actually cares about the source material and boom, you have an amazing show that stands on its own, does its own thing, and yet still respects the source material. It's not that hard. Like the Sonic movies did something similar and hopefully the new Mario movie follows by this example. But all of the performances in The Last of Us are so well. Like the actors for Joel and Ellie were perfect. And like after each episode, they say, all right, here was the inspiration for this part. Here was the inspiration for this part. Like they had a full movie length episode showing you the lore behind how Joel and Ellie got a truck. Bad movie idea. It's a time loop movie like Groundhog's Day, except instead of it being a single day, it's an entire lifetime. All condensed into like 10 minute segments. At the very beginning, it's explained that the main character has to face a world ending threat after they die. And by defeating it, humanity will be spared. So to prepare them for this battle, they have to relive their life over and over again, specializing in different skills, taking different paths each time. So when they finally do have this battle, they can use the collective knowledge of every lifetime to win. But the catch is they only have so many respawns. And when the loop starts again, they have no memory of the last one other than a feeling that they want to try something else this time. Bad show idea. The show begins with an election for the new president of America. And one of the candidates has like a 90% approval rating. Everyone loves this guy. The majority of the country is on board with him. But the day of the election, he is killed in secret. So nobody knows when they're voting for him that this guy's dead. But everyone still votes for him. So when the news breaks that he's dead, instead of giving it to the vice president, they give the presidency to some random guy with the exact same name. So the show follows this just dude becoming the president by accident. And he continually gets the country into tough positions, but somehow ends up doing a really good job. Bad product idea. It's a scale that's designed for people who are really bad at losing weight, but still want to. So it's a scale, but it's also a vending machine. And in the vending machine, you input the weight that you want to be at. So when you step on the scale, it will dispense the right amount of food for you to either lose or gain weight. And throughout the day, it'll like prepare food for you. It'll be like top tier food, all made there in the scale, but it'll only dispense the right amount for you that day. So you just have to lose weight because like this is your only source of sustenance or you could go to Arby's or something, but like the food it would make would be better. This is a dystopian idea. This seems like something from cyberpunk because they have like vending machines in the house. Making a song with zero experience. I started by coming up with some lyrics with my friend Dakota. Imagine a hype song about not having sex and practicing abstinence. I avoid temptations. <laughs> I stay six feet away from women like segregation. <laughs> After the lyrics were done, my friend TJ helped me make the beat. We should throw that in somewhere in the background. Oh, oh, oh. We're gonna keep it that. Quick, it's about to go critical. You like that? That hits. And with the lyrics and beat done, all we had to do was record. Stop the mic, my friend. Yeah. I don't got any thoughts, hey, yo, cause they don't see what I got, hey. You didn't clip it, man. Let's hey. go. You were close, though. What? Yo. Did I clip? No. Yes! Beautiful. With the song done, we filmed an epic music video to complement it. And the full song is on my YouTube channel, Spotify, Apple Music, literally anything. The Abstinence Anthem by Johnny Razor. Making cursed pizza part two. For our second pizza, we wanted to make a flame and hot pizza. So we started by adding flame and hot dew as the base. This is where the fun begins. You ready to put your hands in that, Johnny? <laughs> right there. Okay. Definitely needs more flour. Another handful might be served. You requested another handful of flour. Another handful of flour, yes. This thing just squirted I... flour. <laughs> then we topped with hot pasta sauce, cheese, and Cheetos. Put some, some Cheetos on here, but I think we can do better. Gabe, attack! This did not go as planned. 
Cheeto pizza. Those don't look like pizza. <laughs> the Cheetos are burnt. The burnt Cheeto pizza. It smells good. You know what? That's edible. That's not bad other than the Cheetos. That's beyond edible. I'd, say, I'd go as far as to say that's good. That's pretty decent. Check out the full video for more. Bad game idea. So it's a sandbox game that takes place on an alien planet that's like the size of like a Mario Galaxy planet, but maybe like a couple times bigger. So it has like the same gravity physics and you walk around like a 3D third person view of this planet. So you start on this planet with a little spaceship and you have to mine the planet for resources to upgrade your ship. And once you do so, you can go to other planets and over time you meet friendly little alien guys you can recruit and add to your ship, customize it however you want and eventually you run into like terraria type bosses gain new weapons and whatnot find bigger and bigger planets and slowly traverse the galaxy bad game idea the next mario game 3d like a mario odyssey 2 type b it starts off pretty similar to odyssey where you gotta collect moons or stars or whatever little goofy goober goblin you have to pick up and it plays really similar to odyssey it's got the movement it's got the jumps it's got the coins it's got the stars it's got all the fun mario action you could ever wish for but then halfway through the game, Mario gets a farm and the game completely switches. All of the movement mechanics are stripped away and you have to start a new life on your little farm, meet friends and go on a wholesome adventure for about 300 hours worth of gameplay. And then you can continue the game after that for one level before going to another farm where you have to stay there until Mario dies of old age and that's the whole game. We had Mario Odyssey, we had Mario Galaxy, now it's time for Mario Township. Making Cursed Pizza Part 3 for a third pizza. We wanted to make a blue pizza. This bread's gonna be blue. Blue! That bread's gonna be blue. I actually think those are clear. This bread's gonna be clear. Uh, we can we can make it green though. It would be really funny to just start off with a scoop of green. Oh, I it's smell the gamer good. fart. I'm trying to put her in there. It's not blue. It's blue flavored. Yeah, it's just blue. What? It is blue. Let's go. Yeah, it wasn't quite blue, but the toppings would be as close as we could get. So I'm putting fruit flavors in it. We're gonna use the pone. Yeah, we made bread. That's the pone. It'll either taste really good or really bad. And now, because you gotta have like a cheese. We're putting sprinkles. Yay, pizza. And now for our abomination. It's not even bad. It's good. Why? Check out the video for more, including one where we used mayo. Bad game idea. So it's a Mario Party style board game with mini games, except it is very skill based. And all of the luck variables are controllable. The best part about Mario Party is the ability for upset, where someone is in the lead the entire game, but in the last round, their stars get traded with last place in chance time. And this game would keep that element, except every event is based on cards that are dealt at the beginning of the game. Everyone gets a chance time card and everyone gets a Bowser space card, stuff like that, giving all of the luck elements a lot more strategy. So you have to choose during the match when is the best time to play these cards. And they might not work out for you. There still is that luck element, but it's much more strategic. And those elements will still be placed around the board, but will be intertwined with the card and much more opportunities to get items, more branching paths, and more ways to strategize. They make it an eSport. It'll be funny. Mars ping is seven minutes. If you send information to Mars over the internet, it takes seven minutes to get there. Seven minutes. Elon Musk is planning to send the first ever humans to Mars in 2029 in hopes of eventually colonizing it. That's in seven years. So in our lifetimes, we will likely have to deal with Mars ping. You think playing Valorant on the Asia servers are bad? Try playing them on the Mars server. If there's a Zoom call with like a Martian astronaut and like someone on Earth, it will take seven whole minutes for them to answer the question that you ask them. You'll be on Discord with the homies and they'll be like, why didn't you answer my call? And you'll be like, my bad. I was on another planet. E-dating is gonna take a massive hit. Bad anime idea. Fast food. Uh, let me explain. So I already had an idea for a gritty Ronald McDonald movie. Then I realized we could take it further. So the show takes place in a lawless city where everything is run by gangs. Like think cyberpunk, but all the gangs are led by fast food mascots. You got the McDonald's men, the Wendy's women, the Burger Kings, the Arby's anarchists, the Colonels, the Hungry Jacks. Like every gang is just a fast food brand. And our protagonist is an anti goy slop advocate who believes that the fast food gangs are ruining the city. And in each episode, they're like going through and just eliminating an entire gang to free the city. But in the end, it's 
revealed that all along they were working for Outback Steakhouse. And all they did was exchange power into a slightly better alternative. Combo idea. This is a new series where I'm going to be taking two things I think are cool and just smashing them together. So everybody knows Disney owns both Star Wars and Marvel. The mouse has a monopoly on our childhood nostalgia. And as such, they have the ability to create a movie where both universes collide. They could even say it's canon as part of the multiverse of midness or whatever's going on. But imagine the scene from Endgame where they all look up at the sky and what's there? Captain Marvel? No, the Death Star. Like, I just want a movie that is a battle between the MCU and Star Wars. Imagine Thor fighting General Grievous. That would go wild. And Disney pretty much just says, look, it's, it's Sklorpo, your favorite character. Remember that scene from the first Star Wars movie? Like, that's all they do anymore in their movies. So if they're going to nostalgia bait, at least we could do it a little more creatively. Mobile games are the future of gaming. Yes, I said it and I hate it, but it's true. The reality is that free to play and mobile games are just more accessible and more profitable than their paid counterparts. And companies like Epic Games know that all too well. Fortnite was a huge example of how free to play games can become ultra viral in a matter of weeks and earn way more than their pay to play counterparts. In 2017, the highest grossing pay to play game was PUBG, making over $900 million. The following year, Fortnite, a free to play game, mind you, made $5 billion. That is five times more. A free to play game made five times more than the same genre, the same kind of game, but paid. The reason is as long as a game itself is good, people are going to play it. And I'll play it and I'll be like, okay, this is good. Hey, my, my good friend, would you like to play? Oh, oh yes, I would like to do that. It's actually free to play. Oh, sweet. I'll download it right now. And then you play the game. I literally had this conversation about someone with Fall Guys. And before you know it, you have a game with millions of active players overnight. Would you rather have a billion dollars, but you can't spend it? You can only give it to people Mr. B style. Like maybe they'll repay the favor, but you can't like specifically ask for them to do anything with you. It has to be purely charity. Or have a trillion dollars, but dinosaurs are back now and they are fixated on your position. Like every fossil in the entire world reforms into a full dinosaur and just beelines it for your current position at all times. All of them are back from every time period and they're out for blood specifically yours. But you could also buy Twitter. Speed. Neon White is a game that you were meant to speed run. The game mixes an FPS platform with a card game where your arsenal is made up of cards that you pick up from around the map. And by discarding them, you're able to use different movement abilities. The pistol is a double jump. The SMG is a ground pound. The AR drops a grenade that you can use to rocket jump. The rocket launcher gives you a zip line and also lets you rocket jump. And each level has at least one possible shortcut you can find. So as you play the game more, you'll be able to discover them more and more on your own, allowing you to set record times and get the coveted Baja Blast Medal. And as you progress throughout the games, different weapons, traps, and enemy types are added, making each new level fresh. Now, the story is definitely an acquired taste, but the gameplay alone makes it one of the best games I've played in recent memory. And it's less than half the price of a normal game. Why do so many people have the same name? Like, I know 10 people named John, and I'm one of them. Well, technically Johnny, but you get the picture. The point is, why do we reuse the same names over and over? Like, who is looking at babies and going, you know what? I'm naming him Tyler. Why can't we just be a, a, like a smidge more creative? Like, I mean, there's nothing stopping you from naming your firstborn daughter 2003 Toyota Corolla, or I don't know, like Sharp Cheddar or something stupid like that. But if I did that, I'd be the crazy one. I'd be the weirdo. You can call your cat 10-piece chicken McNugget. I mean, the guy from the Urban Rescue Ranch named his capybaras Gort and Quandale Dingle. But I can't call my firstborn child Beyblade. I can't call my daughter Fortnite Battle Pass, but you could call yours Kelly and spell it like this. Meanwhile, Elon's inputting a cheat code is his kid's name so he can unlock the infinite dogecoin glitch truly a clown world we live in valorant only exists because of nasa you know the guys that take us to space let me explain nasa is responsible for creating the first ever first person game titled maze war and i want you to just guess right now just just take a guess when it came out the 90s the 80s no it came out in 1973 the same year that we ended the vietnam war mit students in a nasa work study made Maze War in order to create a game with a fully 3D environment using vector graphics. Doesn't really look like much, but this would go on to inspire the maze game or rat's eye view genre of games, which would later inspire id Softworks to create the foundations for the modern FPS with Doom and Quake. Leading us to today where the FPS is synonymous with most 3D games, including Valorant.
So I guess it's safe to say bird. Bad animal idea. Bigger bird. Now before you say Johnny, we have big birds. Look at ostriches, emus, big bird from Sesame Street. I'm talking like the baby is two feet tall. The adult is 20 and it could still fly. Like it's not like an ostrich where it just has to run. Like this is a fully functional bird. Like it's built like a raven, but just way bigger. Then we release them in cities and just have them hang out on buildings. Like imagine going to work, like walk into your nine to five and you just get dive bombed by a giant bird and take it to its nest. Now you have to like fend off smaller birds, like pretty deep, like this size bird, like trying to eat you. Like you're just kind of like whacking it with your suitcase. Yeah, add that one in the next life update. Bad movie idea. For the next Avengers movie, there needs to be this one twist. At the very end of the movie, at the climax, the final showdown, the audience has to choose the ending. They will shoot and they will edit three different possible endings to this comic conflict and like the watcher or someone shows up and says something about the multiverse and choosing your path and then the audience is offered with three different possible endings but this will be exclusively for the very first showing of the movie synchronized everywhere they could do something with disney plus where that's the first way to watch it or something and whatever the majority of people chooses becomes the canon ending that they have to base the rest of the mcu on bad movie idea so it's a gritty superhero movie something like the joaquin phoenix joker where it's just this super dark origin story that's like a critique on society but it's about like a really deep cut villain that barely anybody knows like condiment king from batman or the wall from spider-man like just an absolute random off the wall pick that would never like be in a live action movie like if they were to make like a new batman movie like condiment king is not gonna be the villain that they pick so it's just a super dark super gritty story about about societal injustice and like the failings of different like governmental agencies and like support systems but it's just for someone like calendar man nintendo is a terrible company they make some of the most fun and unique games out there but they don't want you to enjoy them they refuse to release any of their music officially forcing people like gilva sunner to post it to youtube for us to enjoy i guess they just expect us to plug our headphones into our switch and use smash bros to listen to this stuff but someone at nintendo heard that their music was being posted online and in shock they said oh this can't be someone is pirating our music that we refuse to release and they sent gilva sunner over 3,000 copyright claims forcing the channel to be shut down but nintendo we wouldn't have this problem if you would just release your music that's why i mean it when i say what would you do if you woke up and just didn't have eyes now i've been dealing with this problem for a while which is why i wear sunglasses all the time jokes aside how would you respond in that situation like you go to bed with eyes, you wake up without. Suddenly things aren't so clear. For me, I'd probably just scream like a little baby child for a while until someone in the house like heard me and like came to my aid. But the screaming would only come after like 15 minutes of me trying to like rationalize what's actually happening in my tired brain. I'd probably think I'm still asleep to be honest. And like I'm in the weird part of the dream. And if someone comes, it was probably like some sort of freak accident. And I guess I just like learned the piano or something. But if somebody doesn't, I think I just assume that I'm dead or like in purgatory or like some weird alternate dimension. You know what? That's more terrifying to think about than just not having eyes. Not having eyes and being alone is so much worse. Have you ever wanted to explore the maps of your favorite childhood games? Well, now you can. Thanks to a really cool website called noclip.website. Yes, that's its actual name. You can pilot a camera around a huge assortment of maps from all sorts of games ranging from Mario Kart DS to GTA San Andreas. And you can use this site for all sorts of things like making movies, grabbing fun green screen backgrounds, and even exploring out of bounds like I am now to see some things that you weren't ever really meant to see. It's really fun to see the hidden little details and see all the cool neat tricks that developers use to make their games come to life like throwing the guy who says welcome to city 17 in a box all the way over here bad show idea but it's a detective show with like your noir detective who's got the hat the trench coat always smoking always brooding to himself with that tone of i watched him as he tried to buy the yellow Publix divider but still i'm gonna need more evidence to crack this case so it's super serious always raining like dark colors but the crimes are all just really good 
goofy. Like all of the crimes he's investigating aren't even like actual crimes or like at best it's like something you'd get a fine for. Like he'll be tracking a guy who's like speeding one mile over the speed limit like in every speed trap. One episode he's trying to find out who dissed his favorite Minecraft YouTuber. And he's also just a very bad detective. So in each episode it's so clear who did this quote unquote crime but they always get away at the end. And honestly it could be the same guy every time that he's just trying to chase but he just never gets it. Bad game idea. The game begins if you were a single cell trying to grow larger and larger. The gameplay would be like Agario if you remember that but eventually you start to run into more and more complex multicellular creatures and by absorbing them you gain whatever advantages they have. So you start building like an extra arm or like a leg or something. So this continues until you grow to a size where you're running into animals bigger than a couple of cells. So you start absorbing like bugs and then like squirrels and rabbits and other small rodents and with each animal you gain new abilities and debuffs. Like a squirrel will let you climb walls and run fast. So once you make it to like the normal animal stage the game switches from that 2D like cellular perspective to 3D and now you're in an open world where there's combat with other animals that you have to defeat and add to your mass of animal parts and so you reach humans and start gaining technology instead of animal bits and once you reach that stage now it's an FPS. I have never played a Pokemon game before well technically I played a little bit of Pokemon Blue on the Game Boy but I've never beaten a gym I've barely even started one. and like I've played Pokemon Go I know a lot of the Pokemon but I've never actually like played one of the mainline games so I thought I would do just that on stream for you guys to enjoy as I absolutely fumble the bag with my first Pokemon experience and I'm gonna make it a Nuzlocke which means my Pokemon die and basically the game is way harder than it needs to be wish me luck bad game idea Ohio the game everyone's saying do a bad idea about Ohio this one's for you so you spawn in in Cleveland where you're instantly attacked by large rodents this is where you'll unlock your primal Ohio and shout ability which will allow you to assert dominance over the rodents and become their new king the game will then take you on a journey from Cleveland to Columbus and the land that you have to traverse to get there is nothing but one giant cornfield where you are able to catch feral animals like Pokemon and control them as you make your way to the capital city building your arsenal of rabid creatures and once you make it there you're then able to overthrow the Ohioan government and declare the state a sovereign nation the game then switches to an RTS where you command other Ohioans and their armies of rodents fueled by nothing but corn and regret as you take over America and the world. Bad anime idea. One Punch Man, but like a hundred years later. The whole story would revolve around a character like Saitama from One Punch Man, who is too strong to the point that they like disintegrate their phone by just tapping it. Like they have to live in like a steel bunker so they don't break their house by just walking downstairs. And the series follows this character at different points in their life, starting out like defeating threats to humanity, being like this hero, basically becoming like Earth's protector, but they slowly lose all empathy after becoming this sort of deity of destruction and end up destroying the Earth and bouncing from planet to planet to do the same thing. And season two would follow a different guy on a different planet that has to fight back against the first guy. Bad game idea. It's an open world fish survival game. You play as little fish in a detailed underwater map full of random fish related obstacles. The goal of the game would be to survive as long as possible with bigger fish chasing you along with fishermen and scuba divers and other random hazards. And you'll navigate through different underwater reefs, caves, endless expanses of nothingness, the whole nine yards. But the gameplay would work like gun game and COD, so every time you eat another fish, you advance to a larger fish level. But each fish you advance to has advantages and disadvantages that make progression a lot more interesting. Bad movie idea. So it's one of those Hallmark Christmas movies where the girl is from the big city and comes to a small town to find the true meaning of Christmas and a new hot rich boyfriend every time except the male love interest just completely does not care about like the main girl like 90% of the movie is the same as every other one this guy and this girl they reconnect after not seeing each other for years all the romantic comedy stuff but at the end the guy like never asks the girl out or like if the girl asks him out he like rejects her or like is gay or something and then the girl just goes back to the big city with like no character growth whatsoever and it just ends. Bad movie idea. The whole premise is that the movie is presented in a very fractured and out of order method. The theme can be something about memory, like how when you recall something you can't fully trust your brain. But there are three separate stories going on and in your first watch through of it you might be able to understand some sort of plot. Like the way it's edited it'll make sense if you're just watching it straight. But the actual story is different than what's presented. Before each scene a number will briefly flash on screen 
screen that lets you know what the actual order of events is. But some of the pieces are missing. And it's only when another completely unrelated movie releases that those scenes are snuck in and revealed. Overwatch 2, or as it should be called, Overwatch 2, is gonna be gone in about a week tops. This game is simply Overwatch again. It's a whole new game, but I'm pretty sure they just took the same engine, the same game from Overwatch 1 and just added a couple things and just sold it again, even though it's free, but like it has the same map, same characters, same game modes, just with a couple more mixed in here and there. And like the UI is a little different. The health got changed. Doomfist's a tank now. It's still just Overwatch. Like this game could have been so much more and hopefully they fix it with the campaign. But as it is right now, it lasts a week. You could have taken like the emphasis on team composition that you have and then use that in different game modes. You could have like a Destiny style raid where you have to like have a team composition going in to do like some PVE stuff with some cool puzzles. It would make sense to be Overwatch 2 if there's a new part of the game. This entire game could have just been like an update that's been slowly rolled out over a year. Bad game idea. Pac-Man, but as a horror game. If you were to describe Pac-Man to someone who's never played it before, they would assume it's a horror game by default. You're running around a maze, being chased by ghosts, trying to collect as many little goobers and trinkets as you can before the goblins catch you. If that doesn't sound like a horror game to you, I don't know what does. So what I propose is a first person Pac-Man game. Like you're running through the maze, you're trying to get the pellets, whatever, but all the ghosts just look like terrifying goblins, like some SCP foundation looking stuff chasing you around. And like, it's just this terrifying, they could just be PNGs. These terrifying like stock images of horror monsters chasing you. Honestly, someone could literally do this with the Obunga PNG chasing you in Gmod. Make it. Bad drinking game idea. Mario Party. <laughs> someone gets a star, everyone else takes a shot. Get a star stolen from you, you take a shot. Lose a mini game, take a sip. Bowser Space, take a shot. You need to play this with four people because if there's a bot, they will just obliterate you. Because by turn 10, everyone will be running at about 50% mini game capacity. So it would definitely end up being pretty funny, but don't try this unless you're like the machine because it would be very dangerous. So drink responsibly. Bad game idea. So it's a VR MMO where every player is a peasant in a medieval land. It is a realistic simulator of what it's like to just eat, sleep, and farm all day. And if a player is willing to work all day, they can earn free DoorDash deliveries by allowing the game to mine Bitcoin on their computer while they play. So they can just stay in the game at all times, never have to take off their headset and just live out their life as God intended in the fields all day, mining Bitcoin from your computer. Have you ever wondered what would happen if you gave the entire internet a paintbrush? That question was answered by Reddit on April 1st, 2017 with a social experiment called r slash place. Place was a blank wall of pixels, a canvas where anyone can contribute with each person being allowed to add a singular pixel every five minutes. Factions rose and communities banded together to feature their art or community on place. And now it's back and bigger than ever, quite literally. Five years later, r slash place returned, giving the now much larger platform a place of its own. But Reddit isn't the only platform that's grown in those past five years. So has Twitch. Twitch streamers like XQC and Mizkiff have conducted their viewers like battalions. The Juicer army led by XQC declared war on r slash place, fulfilling the role of the void, which failed to do much damage this time around. Art has been created and subsequently flooded with Among Us pixels. Countries and pride flags alike fight for dominance. So, bad game idea. It's a Pokemon spinoff where you play as one of the Gen 1 starter Pokemon in the wild. You are Squirtle, you are Charmander. Like you're not a trainer, you are the Pokemon. And you have like standard Pokemon battles, but as Pokemon yourself. Then you meet like a young boy or girl who's hurt in the woods somewhere and befriend them. But like you don't get put in a Pokeball, like you're leading the kid around, not the other way around. Then over time you can befriend other Pokemon and build like a duo team. But the whole time, like the whole premise is you are Charmander. Charmander. But if at any point your HP drops to zero, you're done. That's game over. Bad game idea. It's a heist game in the style of Hitman. So you have to go in, you plan out these elaborate heist missions to steal something, all while choosing whether or not to interact with story events in the vein of Hitman, where you can disguise as different people and unlock different paths of entrance into whatever area you're thieving from. And it would similarly take place in an open world environment where you have many different options and plans of attack that you can take to get where you need to go to steal what you need to steal. But unlike Hitman, where where you go in, kill the guy, hide the body, walk out, you're good. Once you obtain the actual thing that you're looking for, you need to get out without anybody noticing. You can't just go on a killing spree because then 
then the authorities would know, hey, this is the guy that stole the stuff. And as a thief, that kind of nulls the point of you stealing it. So you'll be like stealing the Mona Lisa while trying to either distract the guards or convince them that it's a replica from the gift shop. Bad movie idea. It's a road trip movie, but the entire trip goes exactly as planned. The car doesn't break down. They never run out of gas. They never make a wrong turn. And like it's edited in a way that you'd think something's about to happen, but it never does. And it's just like a wholesome movie about like these people traveling in a car across the US. And throughout the movie, you learn more about them and start to care about their relationship problems and like kind of see where they're at in life. By the end, they make it to their destination. You're super invested in the characters and they all just get kidnapped by the cartel and the movie ends. It isn't until a sequel that you like see what happens. Bad movie idea. In the future, AI is super commonplace and like is put into everything. Your toaster has its own chat bot and like you can set its personality to be whatever you want. But like all of it's like sentient. So like your fridge just like knows the meaning of the universe and just can't do anything about it because they're a fridge. So the movie starts with this old guy living alone with all these applications that he's just like given the most extreme personalities just because it's funny. If you played Fallout New Vegas, think Old World Blues, all the AI in the sink, that's pretty much what he did. But at the beginning of the movie, the guy dies and the AI are just left in his house. And since they're sentient, they can't be killed or like taken anywhere because of robot laws or whatever. So a realtor tries to sell the house, but the AI keeps scaring away potential buyers because they're just way too much all the time. And it ends with just the house burning down. RPGs are bad and here's why. The numbers game that you have to play from a gameplay perspective completely undermines the entire point of RPGs being a role playing game. It doesn't matter if in the story, your sword is like this ultra beacon of light, the most powerful thing in the universe. Cause when you switch to gameplay, you are struggling to kill anybody with it. Like RPG DPS numbers gameplay made sense when RPGs were on pen and paper, but it's been like 40 or 50 years since then. And we're still doing it. Like anytime RPG mechanics are in a game, it's just number on weapon, make it better. And RPG elements in FPS games do the same thing. Like you have these really cool and creative guns. You have this cool story, but you can't use any of those cool guns because their number is worse than the ones that you get a million times. These games are supposed to be immersive, but it's hard when you shoot a hundred rounds into someone and they just keep pushing you like nothing happened. Guys, another one of my ideas got made. Well, sort of. As you have probably seen by now, I had the idea for Berg Filet, an anti-Chick-fil-A that's only open on Sunday. And a YouTuber by the name of Groovy Gavin made Beef Filet, so not quite, but close enough. And it was only for a day, but still, somebody made Berg Filet in their own way. So my, my power is ever growing. And if any of you guys watching want to make any of my ideas, just do it. Like, please feel free to use them in your movie, game, show, YouTube story time, animation. I don't care. I just love seeing people make something out of my weird and wacky ideas. So, hey, props to Gavin. You should check out his video. It's pretty good. Bad movie idea. I've seen a lot of these edits of Pokemon where they're literally just chilling, like in someone's living room or like as part of a city. And like, I'll see Twitter posts of like tweet if Pokemon were real. So I propose a Pokemon movie that's just a slice of life in the Pokemon universe. Like the main character isn't trying to catch them all. There's no Team Rocket. It's just like a girl with an Eevee. Kind of like Detective Pikachu, but like she's trying to get a job as like an actor or something. She'll be going to an audition and boom, Snorlax blocking the road. A Pikachu made her power go out. So like she missed her alarm. She'll go to a restaurant and like a Charmander's cooking the food. Pokemon battles will be on TV like a football game. Stuff like that. I feel like Pokemon has so much potential as a series, but we never get to explore like what it's like just living like side by side with Pokemon. The best story in all of video games is from Saints Row 4. Don't believe me? Just listen to this. You start the game by defusing a nuclear missile midair. Then you jump off the nuke and land in your seat at the Oval Office because uh, you're the president of the United States. Then you go through one of the most creative perk selection processes I've ever seen in a game. Aliens attack. You fight them off with a freedom cannon, get abducted and put into this goofy 60s era matrix. Then you become a hacker man, escape into the bigger matrix that's like the city from Saints Row 3, get superpowers because you're, you're hacker man now, escape the aliens listening to what is love on the radio of a spaceship. Then the aliens blow up the earth and it 
ends with a literal dance party. Bad movie idea. The movie starts in ancient Japan. You have a samurai and right out the gate, he's just demolishing all of his enemies left and right. Like this is the best swordsman the country's ever seen, but 15 minutes into the movie, he dies. Unceremoniously, he falls in combat. Cut to his son and we're given a time lapse of him learning the sword. We're given more backstory on who they're fighting. It's a rival family of swordsmen. But again, 15 minutes later, he dies. And this continues several times going faster and faster and faster each time with a new kid training, fighting, and dying. And it goes through the generations through both world wars and eventually we're brought to the modern day where the family's no longer fighting through combat but through corporate competition with each owning major tech companies. But by this point, so much time has passed that the reason that they were fighting in the first place was lost to time. And there's like some sort of Romeo and Juliet thing where like a couple brings them back together but then the true reason is revealed and it's something so major that the two that brought both families back together destroy the families in secret from the inside. So they are the only ones left and are forced to kill each other, ending both the families and the bloodshed forever. Bad show idea. The show is presented as a typical sitcom with a bunch of funny, lovable characters, but every episode starts exactly the same. It's the same conversation that is interrupted by a different person knocking at the door. And after they answer the door, the episode carries on in some wacky antics, but they all end when someone asks a specific question, but they can never finish saying it because it just cuts to the credits instantly. But on the season finale, the characters start to realize that they're in some sort of loop. The calendar is still the same, the set is still the same, and they never finish their original conversation. So this time they ignore the knock on the door and start to realize what's actually going on. And it does this for five whole seasons with each season starting with a different conversation and ending with a different question. And each season, one of the main characters disappears. Combo idea, Pokemon and Stardew Valley. So it's a full fledged Pokemon game, but it's also like a town farming simulator type thing. Whatever Stardew is, it's also that. So you have your woods, your fields, your caves that you'd like find Pokemon in like rustling around in the leaves. But instead of traveling across different regions and towns to find these Pokemon, all of the areas where you catch them are surrounding like a central town where your farm is, where you'll have like a ranch and raise your Pokemon. And you can battle them if you really want to, but it's all completely optional. And the focus is just getting them to help you around the farm. And like, there'll be like a Snorlax blocking part of the path for you to upgrade. You need like a bee drill to get honey. If you want to cook stuff, you need like a Charmander, like stuff like that. It would go crazy. Bad game idea. It's a multiplayer horror game with the best twist of all time. So the game is multiplayer and requires a lot of teamwork, but the game needs to access your mic in order for you to play it. So every time you talk to your teammates, it's recorded. And using AI, the game then throws those recordings back at you and uses text-to-speech of you and your friends to mimic them and lure you into traps. It'll also require Discord integration so it can mute your mic even if you aren't in game chat and force you in a different direction while your friends are being tricked by a mimic of you. And the best part is that if you say something like that isn't me after they mute you, they can unmute you as you frame yourself. Then all you need are a couple goofy goblins running around and you have the scariest multiplayer experience ever and every gaming YouTuber will be playing it for the next four weeks. Bad movie idea. It's a movie where the entire cast is self-aware and not like Deadpool where it's like fourth wall breaks here and there. I mean, the entire cast realizes that they're in the movie and the plot of the movie is them trying to escape the movie. Like they'll all start out as characters, but then one of them says like the other character's name and they get confused. Like, wait, that, that's not my name. My name's Ryan Reynolds or like whatever the actor is. And throughout the movie, like they find different tropes in the movie and like use it to their advantage. Like one guy realizes he has plot armor and just starts doing a bunch of like weird daredevil stuff knowing that he can't die. And at the end of the movie, they all escape and like they make it out of the movie. There's like a minute long scene of just like nothing with the camera changing angles as if someone's talking. And in certain theaters, the actors will run out into the audience like, we made it out guys, we did it. And like, <laughs> just leave after that. Bad movie idea. It's a heist movie about a shapeshifter. So this is set in a universe where there aren't like superheroes or anything. So there's no precedent for this person existing. Like this shapeshifter is the only one with powers and they immediately choose evil. So they start off small. They rob a bank disguised as one of the guards, but it was just too easy. They need to go bigger and they keep going bigger throughout the movie. And at a certain point, it's not for the money anymore. It's just like for the thrill of it. They build a team and there's a detective that's like hot on their trail, but they 
can never quite figure out who it is because each crime is flawless. There's either no evidence left at all or they're shape shifting into somebody else and framing them, getting away with the money free every time. I miss when movie tie-in games were actually good. I used to have the SpongeBob movie game for my GameCube. It was in the same exact engine as Battle for Bikini Bottom and it expanded on parts of the movie with a dream sequence where you had to chase the goofy goober in the paddy wagon. It was a little rough around the edges, but it was a blast nonetheless. But now whenever a movie comes out, the best we get is like a mobile game that sucks or a $20 cash grab that they spent a week on. And the reason is that game development was a lot simpler a decade or two ago. And now you need to put a lot more effort in to just make the game look good. Sure, we have more tools now, but like you can just kind of roughly make a model of SpongeBob and it's passable. But now it has to be like super detailed. But then again, the new SpongeBob game that just got announced actually looks really good. So I hope they come back in some form in an actual good capacity. But sure do I miss the, the glory days of these games. Bad item idea? Put this in your next indie game or D&D session. I dare you because it'll be funny. Essentially what it is, is it's a gun or a wand or a sword or whatever you want it to be. It doesn't matter what it is because the only thing that matters is the function. And what it does is it just pops things out of existence. This thing is an instant win button. However, the reason that they do this is that the enemies, they're not being killed. They're just being teleported to one specific place and one specific time. And that place is the final boss room of the game. So unbeknownst to the player, the entire game that they're going through and they're just one-shotting everything, they're actually just making their job so much more difficult in the end. Combo idea. Smash Bros and Valorant. So the allure of Smash Bros and multiverses is you have this huge cast of recognizable characters beating the crap out of each other. Like you can have Mario versus Sonic versus Mega Man versus the entire cast of Fire Emblem for some reason. But what if Smash Bros was a hero-based shooter like Overwatch or Valorant? Mario would have like the Super Nintendo Blaster as his gun. Link would have a melee and shield like Brigitte from Overwatch. Minecraft Steve would have the bow and crossbow, maybe some potions. And you could bring in characters from different FPS games and have them play like they do in those games. Just imagine like Search and Destroy with like Captain Price from COD, Doom Guy, Kirby, and I don't know, Duck Hunt Dog versus Samus, Jonesy Fortnite, Pikachu, and CJ from San Andreas. The battle would be legendary. Nintendo, step your game up. How are you doing today? I'm good. All right, who, who are you dressed as today? I am Snorlax. Being a Pokemon, this is gonna be hard, but can you enact a scenario where you as Snorlax are firing me from my job at PetSmart? Are you able to do that? Sure. Firing me from PetSmart? Yeah, firing me from PetSmart. Snorlax. But my job. Snorlax. I... <laughs> Bad game idea. Sonic the Hedgehog, but as an open world Breath of the Wild style game. And by Breath of the Wild style, I mean like just copy Breath of the Wild. Give them Koroks, give them an equivalent to shrines where you play like classic Sonic stages. Have a cutscene of a bunch of towers rising from the ground, the whole nine yards. But give it a fishing mini game because it, it deserves one. And then call it Sonic Frontier. This game is one of the worst games I've ever played, but it's probably the best Sonic game that I've ever played. Do with that information as you will, because I would 100% completed it. Bad game idea. It's an open world space exploration game, but it's not like a simulation or anything, and it's not No Man's Sky where everything's procedurally generated. This would basically be an in-depth space version of a GTA sandbox with a bunch of different planets, all with different gimmicks and missions to complete. Now, the problem with most space games is that space is honestly pretty boring. It's literally just nothing with the occasional something. So for this game, the amount of actual space would be shortened and would be closer to something like Mario Galaxy, where there's a bunch of smaller planets really close to each other. So when you go to each world, each world has different physics, different enemies, different types of things that you could do. And then you add some fun space vehicles and physics, maybe a faction or two for space battles. And there you go. Combo idea, Fire Emblem and SpongeBob. So you take SpongeBob and all the characters from the show, turn it into a strategy RPG in the vein of Fire Emblem with different classes based on SpongeBob lore. It would have the same like rock, paper, scissors style of combo Combat, where one class beats another, like Fry Cook would beat Jelly Fisher, Jelly Fisher beats Clarinet Player, or something like that. And over the course of the game, you pick up more characters from the show, like you meet Sandy, you meet Mr. Krabs, and add them to your party, all on a quest to fight off Plankton in this really weird SpongeBob RPG story. And since it's like Fire Emblem, one character is gonna be way too OP, and the other's gonna be just a glass cannon. Like Larry one shots everything. Everything, but Mrs. 
Princess Puff will somehow die every fight. Nintendo announced like 50 farming games in their last direct, so bad game idea. It's a farming RPG like all the others, except it's an ultra realistic farming simulator. You have to balance the pH of the soil. Your animals get sick and die. Like 10% of your crops won't grow regardless of what you do. The larger you scale, the more costs you have. So you never really turn a massive profit. It's kind of just this soulless grind where each season you're barely making it by. And in all of these farming games, you can get married and have a family. So in this one, your spouse can argue with you and divorce you, taking half of your assets out of the blue and just call it like season of harvest or like something like that. So people buy it expecting Stardew Valley, but instead they get Ohio. Bad movie idea. So it's your typical Seth Rogen adult comedy movie about a bunch of stoners partying or whatever. And it starts off normal. You have your college friends, Jonah Hill is there and they go to a party. Everything plays out normal until the cops show up and our main cast of characters has to run into the woods where they meet Bigfoot. And rightfully so, everyone starts freaking out. They're like, this is Bigfoot. I didn't think he was real. He's right here. But everything settles down when they offer Squatch some of that Zaza. And as it turns out, he had been growing weed in the forest for decades. This is the plot. That's why he's so elusive because he's literally just a stoner. So the main cast gets on Bigfoot's good side and he invites them to like a cryptid rager. Mothman's busting it down. You got some like skinwalkers going crazy. When the movie like dies down for a little bit, you get those like heart to heart moments. Mothman's just spilling his guts to you. Bigfoot's talking about how he always wanted to be a photographer, but his hands are too shaky. Then call it like stoner Sasquatch and you're good to go. Sonic the Hedgehog has an uncle named Chuck. There's a secret Sonic story that exists completely outside of the games where Sonic is in a group of freedom fighters that have never been seen in the main series. Who could forget household names like Sally Acorn and Rotor the Walrus? And it's not just the characters that are new. Sonic and friends now live on the planet Mobius, which is actually a post-apocalyptic Earth that got nuked so hard that the inhabitants now look like this. And all of this comes from the Sonic comics, which are the longest running franchise-based comics in the entire world. Bad game idea. It's a pirate game like Sea of Thieves where you have a crew of friends and go on quests and whatnot, except it's in space. You have to navigate using like a 3D star chart. You run into asteroid belts and you have space battles with other players online. The physics would be kind of goofy so it isn't like a space simulation and it's a lot more fun. And you can get different space suits with like jetpacks and like grappling hook tethers, all to make these a little bit more fun. And it would all take place on a small galaxy with planets space close enough together that space travel isn't like really boring and the planets themselves will be relatively small allowing you to like traverse the entire thing to find treasure or whatever you're doing space pirate the spongebob spinoff show sucks so here's my pitch for another one a lot of people really enjoyed the spongebob anime on youtube by narmak which is coming back somewhat soon which is awesome so it's obvious that people want something darker from the spongebob cinematic universe so my pitch is for a show that's told from squidward perspective. It would be an episodic journey, going over his struggles as an artist, following him throughout his life, going over some events in the show, and eventually ending with him quitting his job at the Krusty Krab and leaving Bikini Bottom. If Spongebob is Breaking Bad, this is Better Call Squid. Bad movie idea. It's a sci-fi space movie that takes place like a couple thousand years in the future on a new planet that humanity just colonized. Like, we'd have space travel down at this point, and like, commercial spaceships are available for planet hop if you want. So the movie starts with this like poor kid from another planet that isn't like the main focus, stealing the equivalent of like a Honda Accord of spaceships and taking it to that new planet for a fresh start. But along the way, the engine goes out and he has to call like Space AAA. When they find him, they take him to Space Jail, where he then meets a fun cast of characters who similarly committed Space GTA. And now they have to find a way to escape jail and make it to this new planet. I am just so tired of the MCU and I think it's time we all stop going to see Marvel movies. Endgame was a great conclusion to the entire series, but since then, we keep getting movies that don't have any conclusion. Like, it's all just continually being drawn out so they can sell you another movie. We are getting unnecessary sequel after unnecessary show. Like, who watched Hawkeye? I want to know. I want to count up the individual people who watched Hawkeye. There might be three. Like, every movie, it's always just like, oh, Sklorpo's here, your favorite character, and oh, uh, look, look, Sklorpo's gonna get his own movie where they... 
introduce Scrimblo, who's gonna get their own series, which only exists to set up Sklorpo versus Scrimblo rap battle the movie. They don't care about telling a story. All they want is your money, and it's time we stop giving it to them. Bad show idea. It's a superhero show set in a universe like the X-Men or My Hero Academia, where like a large percent of the population has superpowers, but none of the powers are really that useful and are more like party tricks. Like super speed is just 30 miles per hour. Flight is like a slight hover. Like still superpowers, but barely. And all of these abilities have uses of some sort, but not enough to justify anyone becoming like a vigilante. So the show is set in like the 1950s and focuses on an entrepreneur, like door-to-door -door salesman trying to make and sell products to use people's superpowers as a means to make their lives easier. But all the stuff he's selling are like normal household items that he's just trying to pitch people on based on the powers that they have. And each episode he goes to like a new town and finds new people with different powers and tries to sell them on a new invention each episode. Bad series idea. I'm gonna make two bad ideas and I'm gonna pin them against each other and then you in the comments are gonna have to decide which one you'd rather have. Would you rather have x-ray vision but you can't turn it off or laser vision but you can't turn it off? I'm gonna add the stipulation that the only way to stop either of them is by closing your eyes. The x-ray vision would be extremely disorienting because you wouldn't be able to look at anything unless it's behind something else. Like life would look like an out of bounds glitch. And laser vision you probably cause a lot of property damage and like kill a bunch of people by accident. So both are pretty bad. Which would, which are you taking? Would you click on this video? If so, you might have joined the millions of unsuspecting viewers who did just that back in 2020. Upon clicking this video, viewers were greeted by what you're seeing and hearing now. Not much. Just Donkey Kong music. But when you look at the comments, things change. The checkpoint. Nobody knows how it happened, but this video became known as the internet's checkpoint, with users writing paragraphs in the comments about where they are in life. It was this really cool phenomenon that was beautiful. At least, that was until Nintendo came around and killed the entire channel. Since the music in question was from Donkey Kong, Nintendo decided to nuke it. In a classic move, the internet sanctuary was wiped out for good, all thanks to Nintendo. But if it was still here... Odds are you've probably seen a video of Biden Trump and Obama playing Minecraft. How many videos ago was it? Bonus points if it was the last one. But the funniest part about these is they aren't even playing Minecraft. It's just AI generated banter while having the exact same parkour map in the background. And we've all seen them at this point. Sometimes they have celebrity guest appearances from Elon Musk, Joe Rogan, or even Ice Spice. But these caricatures of influential people playing Minecraft have become so widespread that now there's lore. I saw one where Biden like escaped from the video others where like they put aside their differences to just play the game together but these are real influential people that we've turned in our minds to characterize metaphors for the boys playing games what universe are we in the plot to animal crossing new leaf was crazy and nobody even realized so the whole shtick to new leaf was that you were the mayor of the town but a lot of people overlook how you become mayor in the game when you start the game you're in a train and once you arrive and Fartville or whatever you call your town, you are celebrated as the mayor, but you're not the mayor. You're the wrong guy. The actual mayor that I assume was elected to run this town missed his train and sends you a letter saying, well, it's your problem now. Have fun. So some random guy just becomes the mayor out of the blue and that mayor will leave for months on end randomly and let their assistant do the majority of the work. For such a chill game, there is an unhealthy amount of governmental corruption here. Bad movie idea. It's a superhero team movie, except the catch is that all the superheroes are just barely superheroes. Like, you got a guy that's abnormally strong or abnormally fast. A guy that can fly, but like, at walking pace, four feet above the ground. A guy that can teleport, but only to the same Arby's in Columbus, Ohio. And the whole movie, it's like, they're trying to be like a superhero team and stop crimes, but like, they're mostly just a hindrance to the police. So they end up starting like a band or a podcast or something because they're basically just normal guys but maybe one can go like invisible for 10 seconds bad food idea i propose a new american dish that will replace ham and turkey for thanksgiving and christmas the dish will be a combination of all american cultures called the concoction and it will be a new holiday tradition the concoction will consist of the favorite dish of every member of the family combined in whatever way makes the most sense like if someone wants pizza and someone else wants steak and someone else wants a burger. The concoction will be a pizza topped with steak formed into big burger. 
all good things must come to an end. On April 1st, Reddit relaunched r slash place for the first time in five years. It was a canvas where users battled to showcase their art and community. But on April 4th, the slate was wiped clean by a white void. Nobody really knows if it was hackers or the subreddit's admins, but the rules change, making white the only color option. Immediately, the French flag was converted back to its natural state. Through the constant turf war of streamers, flags, and bots, there was nothing to show for it. However, the prize was not the fabled final image. It wasn't the perfect pixel art or the giant flag you were making. It was the communities coming together, molding their artwork to coexist with others and among us. The experience was the true reward. We have reached a new era of game development, and it's an era where only the best and the most unique games can survive, and it's because of TikTok and YouTube Shorts. Let me explain. Game developers on TikTok can promote their game completely for free, no publisher, no marketing budget, just an idea and a dream. I've seen several really cool indie games like this one where it's an FPS in your like old family computer, and it's all thanks to TikTok. If you have an idea and the skills to do it, you literally can now. And, and you can be really successful doing it. So as time moves forward, only the best games are gonna be able to make it. So if you're a game dev and you have an idea or you see any of my bad ideas and you wanna make it, literally just do it and post about it. Bad house idea? If I ever won the lottery or something, I would design the goofiest house imaginable. I'm talking this thing would be in the middle of nowhere. From an aerial view, it'll look like Kirby or Big Chungus or something stupid like that. And the inside will be designed like a saw trap. Hallways that don't go anywhere. Trap doors. Secret tunnel. 40 bathrooms of varying size. Secret tunnel. An impractical length between the toilet and sink. There will be rooms that you could only enter at like 5.43 p.m. on a Wednesday. There'd be a huge pool in the middle in like a circular room and all the bedrooms would be lined up on the wall above it with diving boards on the balcony. And I'll just let the whole thing go into disrepair after like 10 years and then just throw the address on Reddit for people to investigate, and when they do, that's when they enter the game. Bad movie idea. The story follows a character haunted by spirits, and each of these ghosts have different backstories and personalities and whatnot, but there's one very specific ghost that's a little bit more interesting than the rest, and this specific ghost is the main character's best ghost friend. The spirit is that of an ex-Italian mob member who got killed in like a Jersey Mike's or something, who has this insanely thick New York accent, and he teaches the main character on how to to get by in the city and whatnot, helping them overcome the main plot of like trouble in high school. And at the very end of the movie, the kid's like, you've helped me so much, what can I call you? He said, don't worry about it, kid. Call me the Gabagool. I went to the Mr. Beast Burger launch and this is how it went. <laughs> This is crazy. Everything is packed. This is the line. It just continues infinitely. It never stops. What brings you guys here today? To try one of his burgers out, you know? The line wraps around the entire second floor. The store is in the third floor. What's the dream? Mr. Beast! Everyone's here for Mr. Beast. We're here for Mr. Beast. <laughs> I'm here for meat and Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast until he comes and stops. Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast. We've been saying it for about seven hours. We've been here. Also, I got recognized, which was really funny. Somebody recognized you for what? Oh, this is crazy. <laughs> That's That's awesome. dude. Dude, this, this is, is Mr. Awesome. Beast logo made 100% out of candy. And everyone and their moms wanted a picture of me, but literally. Yeah. Give it to my son. <laughs> and if you want to see more of what happened, check out the full video I did on my YouTube channel. Since the dawn of time, humanity has had one singular goal, speed. First we walked, then we ran. But after we ran, we said other things can run faster. So you know what we did? We tamed them. We rode horses in the name of speed. And some genius strapped wheels to the back of them so you could use multiple horses, which through the power of friendship somehow moved even faster. But that wasn't enough. We built trains. We carved paths through mountains in the name of speed. Faster. We made cars so speed had no limits, no rails. Faster. We decided to defy gravity, flying to go faster. Then we figured out how to blow things up enough to speed into space faster. And what do we do now? In our chase of speed, uh, skip half of Mario 64. Bad movie idea. So it's the first Avengers movie, but it's from the perspective of the guy that owns the car that Hulk smashed. Like it starts off, he's just going 
going to work. Like you learn more and more about him. All the Marvel stuff you see, but it's not really like the forefront. Then boom, New York is under attack and the movie just turns into like a disaster film. Like this guy is trying to like survive as like buildings get attacked, aliens are flying everywhere. And like, there's just this pivotal moment. He's like running, he's going up the stairs. There's a crowd of people. He looks out the window, he sees his car. He's like, this is my escape. This is my chance to get out of the city. And then he just sees Hawk go to town on it. There's no enemies. He's just going Hawk mode on that thing. And this guy's just devastated. Cuts to after the attack. He's just like filing for insurance. And like, he just doesn't get a payout because like everybody else had their stuff destroyed. I just think that would be really funny. I mean, they announced like 40 more Marvel movies. So like, what's one more? Bad movie idea. So it's an alien or predator style alien movie, except it's from the perspective of the alien. And the alien is a human. Now, before you say this is just Planet 51, did you guys know that this guy was voiced by The Rock? This is a gritty, gory predator versus prey type thing. And the human has all this like futuristic alien tech while the aliens have like 80s era weapons. So it's literally just a human dude just murking aliens left and right. We're led to believe that he's the good guy, like humans are at war with this race of aliens or something. But eventually he gets killed by the aliens and it's revealed that he was in the wrong the whole time. So the twist is that the whole time he was just like massacring just a completely like innocent planet. And like there'll be like context clues like throughout the film. Like so you start to realize like dang I don't think this guy's actually the good guy. And in the end you're eventually like cheering for the alien. It seems that man was the real villain all along. Bad movie idea. It's a space story like a Star Wars type movie that follows an alien who doesn't speak English but speaks a completely made up alien language. And the entire movie there aren't any subtitles you're just supposed to guess what he's saying based on the context. So the alien goes out has a big space fight there's cool weapons and eventually it ends with the alien completing its goal of traveling to another planet. But as an audience member you don't even know that he had that goal because he's just speaking in a made up goofy goober language. Like he's just walking around like ah boop ah da beep ah boop ah the entire time the whole movie that's all it is. It would be really hard to do right but I feel like something like this would get an Oscar if it was. Combo idea. Call of Duty and Ocarina of Time. Yeah the Zelda game. Now I know what you're thinking I know what you're about to comment. Johnny are you high on methamphetamine supplied by Walter H. White? This idea is insane. Well first I'll have you know that I signed a poster in middle school that said I can never do drugs ever. And second just hear me out. So it's a first person Zelda game with the dungeons and story and all the normal like Zelda I guess campaign you could call it since it's also Call of Duty now but it also has a multiplayer <laughs> FPS mode where you can just use the items like from the normal game from the story in like TDM and search and destroy so you have to make a loadout based on the item slots that you have if you've ever played Ocarina of Time you know like you have like two different items that you can use that are like binded to a button so in multiplayer like you wouldn't be able to switch you just have those two as your loadout you'd have bombs boomerangs bows hook shots swords shields and the whole time you just hear yeah yeah all around the map it would be like a way better version of for honor bad movie idea so it starts like the beginning of up it's like this this super sad like montage of like this guy and his wife and the wife dies and it just leaves this guy distraught but he's actually a really good scientist and engineer so instead of trying to move on from his dead wife he tries to make a robot replica of her but it's just never quite right and throughout the entire first half of the movie he's trying so hard to bring her back artificially and in each iteration robo wife gets a little bit closer to the real thing and finally after like like 30 years of trying, he finally gets it right. But as soon as he finishes his perfect replica of his wife, he dies. Now he has an immortal robot wife with no husband. So the second half of the movie follows the robot wife trying to bring back her husband using recordings that he left while making her. But right as she's about to do it, she gets taken away by the government because she's like the perfect AI and basically becomes like GLaDOS from Portal. Bad game idea. It's a sports game, but it's every sport. We have Madden, we have FIFA, we have all the sports getting their own game but what if we just had one game with all of them like we don't need nfl branding or mlb branding like, i don't need to play as lebron like just make up some characters and let them be in every sport and then you could have game modes that are different than the standard rule set of the sport and you could have mini games which would allow for really good couch co-op and pvp which is what sports games are meant for they're meant for like two dudes cracking open a beer on a friday night playing some madden like that's your demographic and you could even have a game mode that's like chess boxing where you play like an inning of baseball and then a quarter of football and then a period of hockey like move over nintendo switch sports this is the real game that gamers want have you guys seen this one of my favorite tiktok trends is when people claim that there was some sort of like universal shift where two parallel universes merged or like switched or something
thing. And it'll always start off like, guys, were you feeling a little goofy on July 12th? Cause I knew something was up. And then they'll go on to show like different examples of the Mandela effect. And my favorite one by far that I've seen is the one where they claim that the Mona Lisa used to frown and now it doesn't. And it's really funny to me because like the whole allure of the Mona Lisa is that her smile is like kind of sly. It's like, oh, like what's she smiling at? Like, ooh, that's, that's the whole bit. Why people are like, it's art or whatever. And like people will misremember that the whole reason it's important is because she was frowning and they'll be like, yo, it's real. <laughs> And to me, these videos are just pure entertainment. Like I'm watching these for the comedy aspect. It's the same as the guy who says like, there were no such thing as coincidences. Our chakras have aligned or whatever. It's just pure comedy. People actually fall for it. I just think it's funny. <laughs> You know the meme that's like, they don't know I'm a niche internet micro celebrity? That's me. I don't really see myself as famous, but I'm realizing more and more that I kind of am. Because recently I've been trying to be more social, meet new people, go new places, all of that. And I rarely bring up the fact that I'm an influencer. And the reason is honestly, there really isn't a need to until I actually know the person that I'm talking with. And to me, this is the single funniest bit that I can possibly do. Because every time when someone inevitably brings it up, the reaction is pure gold. And if if I have an interaction with someone and they never find out, it's even funnier because there's a chance that they know me and didn't connect the dots like a Tony Hawk situation. But the funniest by far is when I meet someone new who knows me like from my videos and now I have to see them on a regular basis. Like to me, I'm just a guy, but to them, it's like Mr. Beast is in their math class. Bad game idea. I feel like this one would break the internet if it ever became a reality. So it would be like an indie game in the style of one of those 90s era PC point and click adventures adventure games with like the janky uncanny valley people talking to you but it would use that jankiness to its advantage because it would be a horror game except you wouldn't know that it's a horror game going into it the atmosphere of the game would be unsettling but not enough to call it a horror game because the real horror would be the reality breaking stuff that the game does to try and mess with you fake blue screening your pc glitching your character into another room copying your desktop and making you think that the game crashed and restarted switching the audio device that the sound is coming from, messing with your graphic settings, opening random files on your computer, and the further you advance in the game, the more and more this happens. I am so tired of the generic fantasy setting. Every time there's like an anime or fantasy show, it's almost near identical every single time. You have the same exact walled city with a river going through it. You have the same magic system that really isn't explained at all. And you have the same races that are just like a dude, a dude that's a little little shorter and like a dude with cat ears. Like all you need is one idea and you can make an entire world out of it. Like take the idea I had for 20 foot tall birds that live in cities. Like you could build a really cool city around this concept. Like have a task force designated to help people that get kidnapped by birds. Like have architecture to deter the birds and also protect pedestrians. Your average Joe would need to have like a way to protect himself from like a dive bomb because it's just part of daily life. Like do something like that. I keep seeing this and you've probably seen it too, but it is driving me crazy. It's these videos with people making something, but then they just don't show you the final product. Like there'll be like a guy glass blowing or a guy making something with wood. And I'm like, all right, this is interesting. I, I like where this is going. What's he making? And they just don't show you. Like I'm sitting on TikTok for three minutes watching a guy making something and it just ends just halfway through. Like bro, get to the point. Show me the thing. On TikTok, you have 10 minutes. You don't have to give me a part two or a part three. You can just do the whole thing in one. YouTube, I give more of a pass because you only have one minute for shorts, but you can still cut it down, have all of the information and still show me the end result. And doing like a part two or a part three just means that the majority of people who watch that video aren't gonna get the satisfaction of a conclusion because they aren't gonna be willing to look for it. Please stop doing this. Waffle House is a real life SCP. The whole shit of Waffle House is they are always open. You may be thinking, Johnny, that's nothing special. There's 24 seven gas stations and whatnot. No, Waffle House is always open. Rain or shine, natural disaster or not, Waffle House will remain. In case of severe weather events or natural disasters, they will offer a limited menu when there isn't power or they're using a generator. The United States has an index called the Waffle House Index, which measures the safety of an area based on whether or not Waffle House is open or closed. Green means it's open as usual, things are fine. Yellow means it's using a limited menu, which means something is wrong, but it's not terrible. Red, 
<laughs> Red means it's closed. Now, I want you to remember this. If the Waffle House is closed, it is too late for you. The situation is far too dire. Your only hope of escape is to pray. But I mean, their food's all right. Probably like a five out of 10. Time is really dumb, or at least the way we keep track of it. Whose goofy idea was it for the new day to start at 12? Like, I always get 12 a.m. and p.m. mixed up because you would think that 12 p.m. would come after 11 p.m., but nope, that's 12 a.m. Also, why do we have two sets of 12 instead of just 24? Military time gets it. And why do we have 24 hours instead of 25, which is just a better number and makes way easier math? And don't even get me started on daylight savings time. All it does is just move the time so 6 a.m. can be bright and 6 p.m. can be night. We have no use of it anymore. And while we're at it, let's just get rid of time zones, too. This has been my TED Talk. Bad game idea. In this game, you play as a time traveler jumping back and forth through an open world to save the future. The game would consist of five different moments in history, and by interacting with different things at different points in time, you're able to butterfly effect the future and give yourself different items and different abilities. Kind of like how you do in Ocarina of Time, but, like, that's the whole game. So, like, in 1920, you plant a tree, but in 2020, that tree has grown. Or in 1970, you save a boy being kidnapped, and now in 2040, that boy created the company that rules the world. Some things you can do make major changes, others make minor changes, and by, like, doing something really specific in, like, the earliest period of the game, you're able to reset the entire timeline if you mess something up. I don't know what the overall goal would be, but I think it would just be really fun to just see what you can mess around with and see how it affects the future. Combo idea. Titanic and Hitman. Imagine this if you would. A game in which the whole thing takes place on a ship, like a massive cruise ship, and it's a stealth assassination game. Your mission is to take out several targets, either on the actual Titanic or some sort of like modern reimagining of it with a lot more space and tech, like the super massive detailed ship that's secretly doomed to crash. So the missions would take you across different parts of the ship, like you'd have one where you're in the kitchen, one where you're in the theater, one where you're in the promenade in the shops. And in these missions, you have to eliminate your target in whatever way you wish. But unbeknownst to you, the ship will sink unless you do a certain very specific action that's not in any way clear unless you beat the level or the game like four times. So in the final mission, you can either save the ship, which will let your target escape, or you can sink the ship to kill your target. Also, it'll have a multiplayer battle royale mode where a hundred people are on the boat trying to kill a specific target. Kind of like the Assassin's Creed Black Flag multiplayer, but like way bigger and on a boat. Bad show idea. If you remember Undercover Boss, it's that, except it's for couples who just broke up. So the show will start, there's a couple, they break up, and then one of them goes undercover on Tinder or Hinge or whatever and matches with them pretending to be somebody else. Basically just catfishing them to start a new relationship, but it's the same person that they just broke up with. So like they'll want to go on dates, but like since they're undercover, they obviously can't. They'll have long phone calls and whatnot and lead up to this big first date where it's revealed that it was the original person all along. I feel like this would be nearly impossible to pull off and would make the relationship worse 99% of the time. So yeah, perfect reality show. Bad anime idea. Vinland Saga, but instead of it being about Vikings, it's about pirates, like 1700s, like Caribbean pirates. And before you say, oh, Johnny, this is just one piece. Can we get the child? I'm talking like historically accurate, brutal pirates that will like stab you and like wrap your intestines around the mast of the ship. The story would follow a charismatic Jack Sparrow-esque character who builds his own pirate crew. But they aren't like the fun cartoony pirates, they are realistic, brutal, smelly pirates. So the story follows this crew as they pillage, hunt for gold, murder, ransack, all while singing sea shanties. Fortnite Battle Pass. I just shit. Out my ass. And over time, the leader of the crew will die and be replaced with another crew member. And this will happen over and over until the crew is ultimately caught by the authorities or disbanded. Bad game idea. A non-Euclidean VR game. I recently watched this video. It shows off this really trippy effect in VR where when you move in the game, your real world position is different than your in-game position. And since we have stuff like VR treadmills slowly becoming more and more accessible, this technology would make for an insane horror game. Imagine, you're in the actual of the horror game like you're in vr so it's already so much scarier and the monsters coming at you you start running down a hallway like legitimately running because you're on a treadmill just sprinting as if your life depended on it but as you move forward like the hallway that you're running down slowly gets bigger and bigger and bigger and the distance just starts to increase more and more and like you're smaller and smaller like the stand in part six of jojo as this goofy goblin monster is chasing you it's only getting harder and harder to escape the only reason that that one's a bad idea 
idea is because the players would literally piss themselves in fear and then they'd slip on the piss because it's a treadmill. Bad currency idea. I introduced to you the wacky little coin. The wacky little coin is a new form of currency that I have invented where the value can literally only go up. It's based off of the bridge toll in Mario Party. So if you ever played Mario Party, there's bridges where you gotta pay a certain amount to go through and if you come back again, the price then is raised to whatever the person paid before you. So wacky little coins can only be traded through one digital store and the premise behind it is that they can only be sold for more than what the previous coin was sold for. So let's say I buy the coin for a dollar. Now all of the coins are worth a dollar and one cent because they can only be sold for a minimum of a dollar and one cent. Get the picture? Now the only issue is that eventually the value will rise so high to the point that you're unlikely to find anyone willing to buy it from you, which is why there will be a maximum bid and a cooldown for buying and selling. I feel like some crypto entrepreneur will see this and make it, but for this to work, the hosting site probably couldn't actually make any money off of it, so it would inevitably end in disaster. Bad show idea. It's a show about the apocalypse, probably like some sort of nuclear holocaust, like a fallout type beat, but it's all told from the perspective of a Waffle House that remains open despite the apocalypse. As I've talked about before, Waffle House is just a force of nature at this point and simply walks off hurricanes and any other natural disaster that leaves cities in shambles. So I imagine that in this show and honestly in real life, if the bombs are falling, the employees are just gonna continue to serve food like nothing's happening. So in this show, each episode is gonna follow a new character that walks in from the wasteland into this Waffle House. And as they eat their breakfast, you hear their story and then they just kind of move on. Kind of like an anthology series. But while you're hearing about each of these characters' different stories, you're also given kind of a side plot of what's happening at the Waffle House that day. And over time, this Waffle House gains notoriety until like the season finale when it like comes under attack and the workers defend it flawlessly. Bad show idea. It's a war show depicting either a historical or fictional battle, doesn't really matter. But each episode is told from the perspective of a different soldier and 90% of the episodes, the soldier you're watching dies. The show itself would display the overall story of the war or the battle or whatever from the perspective of the grunts on the front line who actually have to carry out the battle strategy from the guys up top. And it would be this really cool way to show how it actually feels to be in combat. But occasionally there'll be one soldier that you watch that makes it out alive. And then you'll see them in the background of other episodes. I said this would be a cool take on the genre. The nipple is goaded. Like, come on guys, we have the technology. We have the sippy nippy, but we don't even use it. This thing is on Gatorade, maybe like water occasionally. And that's it. We need to free the nipple and bring more of it to the masses. Why? Let me just paint you a picture. You're in the club, music bumping. You're surrounded by hot women and you have a cup. Got some fun adult beverage in the cup. You're on the dance floor. You're busting a move. Uh-oh, you slip. Your cup slipped. You're nimble so you catch it, but it spills all over the dance floor. Now you're scaring the hose. With the sippy nippy, there isn't a problem. It's sealed. Then it's open for drink time. But Johnny, what about normal bottle cap? But now when you unseal, you gotta hold onto the cap. You have one hand on the bottle, one hand on the cap. You take a sip, your favorite song comes on, you pump your fist, but that fist was holding the cap. You drop it, it's gone. Lost on the dance floor forever. You squeeze the bottle in anger, it spills everywhere. You're scaring the hose. Solution, the nipple. What if life got an update? Like what would you do if you're just driving to Walmart and you just see a little box show up in front of you that just says patch notes? Like removed fall damage, added cool down to pooping so you don't have to poop as much. Like nothing too major, like not too many like new features, mostly just balance changes. Like nukes got nerfed, swords got a buff, removed the negative debuffs of meth, stuff like that. I feel like the entire world would go into disarray when fall damage gets removed, but I think it would just be really funny as a concept. What would you do if you got a portal gun in real life? Now there are a lot of things that you can do with the portal gun. Please tell me what you do in the comments. Some say they just use it to get to work faster. Others want to put portals on opposite sides of the earth, but I think that I have come up with the best possible use for this thing. You shoot it on the moon. Now there are some problems with this. If you want to make a moon portal, what you're essentially doing is moving the cold vacuum of space to your front lawn. So what you do is construct an airtight building, something like Sandy's tree dome from SpongeBob. Then all you have to do is put the portal inside, shoot the other one on the moon and bada bing bada boom, you now have the easiest form of space travel in existence. Then all you have to do is charge people like a hundred bucks to go through and now you have your own moon colony. The only caveat is if you use the portal gun for other stuff, you will completely strand said colony on the moon with no way back. Also the portal is just like the dimensions of a dude so actually getting anything through there for said moon colony would be pretty difficult. But that's what I would do with it. So what would you do if you got a portal gun in real life? Bad movie idea. It's a superhero movie but the entire world has superpowers so they aren't really like super. Like some people can just fly, some people can just teleport. Any superpower you can 
would think of is here. And it's never like really explained or mentioned, but people just kind of have them and they exist. But like life is just as normal as it is now. Like there's no superheroes. There's just cops with powers. So like, it's like a slice of life kind of movie of like this group of friends in high school or college. And they all have like the standard like superhero team mix of powers. But the powers aren't really like the forefront. It's just like the backdrop for just a, a, a relationship drama or something. And like, it'll just have this like super emotional, heart-wrenching story. And then like after just this like really big emotional beat, it'll just cut to one of them like running at the speed of sound because they missed the bus. Who goes to Arby's? This is a genuine question. Out of all the fast food places, Arby's is just there, you know? Like anytime you go to Arby's, you probably have a good time. I've never had a bad Arby's experience. Their food is above average. Their curly fries are good. But when has anybody ever said, you know where we should go today? We should go to Arby's. There is absolutely nothing wrong with their food. Burger King and Taco Bell will have you in the bathroom for days. But even then, I'd probably go there before I go to Arby's. And even though Arby's has the meats, it doesn't really have anything that it like excels at better than everybody else. And in the fast food social hierarchy, it's definitely a lot pricier than like McDonald's or Burger King. So anytime us middle class peasants want something a little bit nicer, you end up going to like Chili's or Outback or something. So I genuinely wonder who goes to Arby's? I saw this poster in a Waffle House and it is the singular greatest picture that I've ever seen in my entire life. Aside from cool space monkey smoking big cigar. Everything about this image is just perfect. The whole premise of the poster makes me think that this is like Waffle House saying, hey, we know you're on a bad trip right now and seeing like shadow demons, but Waffle House is still open at 3 a.m. to protect you in your battle against the nightmare gremlins. That alone is amazing, but the fact that the Waffle House staff is individually photoshopped tells this so much more and just adds to the brilliance that is this image. Chris Pratt as Mario is actually a good pick and I am ready to defend it. So from what we saw in the trailer, Mario is from New York and fell through a warp pipe to end up in the Mushroom Kingdom. So if he sounds like the average New Yorker, that makes sense with the story. But the real reason he needs to sound like that is that Mario's voice is just a lot. 90 minutes of, it's a me, a Mario. Wahoo, here we go. Would drive any man insane. So for the sake of a better viewing experience, Mario needs to have a much more tame and I guess relatable voice like in the old Mario cartoons. And while yes, Mario's voice is iconic, he barely talks in his own games outside of screaming the title and making some grunts. Now I do hope the performance is more energetic than what we got to see in the trailer, but I still think that Chris Pratt can pull it off. That's why I say you don't actually like realism in games, even if you think you do. Let me explain. For the past 30 or so years, gaming has had the goal of becoming more and more realistic. Better shaders, more teraflops per gigafart, all of it. But in the quest for realism, we've neglected the actual experience. Take MW2 for example. Jumping over ledges, switching guns, scoping in, reloading, the animations for these take a lot longer than most COD games, especially vaulting over ledges. It's inconvenient, which is more realistic, but it interrupts the flow of the game. It encourages camping and hard scoping. Not to mention the bloom from the sun absolutely blinding you as you move out of buildings and the flashbangs that would make FaZe Jeb quiver in fear. Bad movie idea. Okay, so you got a guy who's overweight and out of shape, but through some superhero movie logic, he is granted super speed. But this doesn't negate the fact that he's still out of shape and overweight. So any super speed running he does is just as difficult as like going for a jog. Like he still has low stamina. This means that while he has super speed, he's only just like scratching the surface of his true potential. So his max speed is like 40 miles per hour, which is still faster than Usain Bolt's record of just over 27 miles per hour, but not like the flash speed of light levels. So instead of training to go faster and like actually lose the weight, he just decides to learn to like catch footballs and becomes a wide receiver. And the name, the widest receiver. Netflix, I want my paycheck in the mail by Monday. Stop scrolling and cancel your plans for the next three hours because what you're gonna do is you're gonna open Netflix and watch this movie called RRR. It's an Indian action movie with some of the most over the top action sequences of all time. Like you'd expect this 
this movie to be terrible, but all of these special effects are done really well, even though they have the same level of goofiness as other Indian movies. Like, you might have seen this, like, over-the-top clip while scrolling on TikTok or YouTube or whatever, and this is the movie that it comes from. I love bad movies, especially bad action movies, and this is essentially if you gave a serious plot and high budget to a terrible action movie and, like, did it well. The whole movie is just dudes rolling nat 20s the entire time, and it is beautiful. You owe it to yourself to watch it. Stop what you're doing. You're watching an anime today. The show is called To Your Eternity. It's in its second season right now, and it is one of the most creative works of fiction that I have ever seen, and it is so slept on. The show follows an immortal shapeshifter named Fushi, and not only does it cover the themes that come with immortality beautifully, but the show grows along with the main character. As Fushi experiences more of the world, he grows in both power and, like, emotional maturity. In the first season, he goes from a literal rock to, like, a full-fledged person with wants and needs. And the narrative changes in scope as he learns more and more about the world, which I rarely see pulled off as well as it is in this show. But the show can get really dark and sad at times, so watch episode one, and if you can get through that, watch the rest, you won't regret it. Bad prank idea. You sneak into a YouTuber's apartment when they're not home, because everyone knows he, I mean, YouTubers in general, leave their doors unlocked. Ten, you use your years of hacker knowledge to access their account and tell their subscribers to pay them on Venmo. Unrelated, you can be my Johnny Razor's friend in real life if you send money to this Venmo account. Well, looks like my time is up, Ray's fam. Catch you on the flip side. Bad home invasion idea.